The young man exhaled, and then began to laugh, saying that this simply could not be. A certain girl claimed that she had stolen his prey, which was a mutant cicatrice, on a rank monster. The guy's name was Lint and he was an adventurer. He had just been promoted to D-rank, but he had already been defeated. The guy thought that defeating this monster was just his distant dream. Now they were traveling in search of a new job. The guy was walking along a country road with a backpack on his back and used to say that he was strong enough, since Kyrike was always so self-confident. Kyruk is this small furry monster that was in the pocket of Lint's chest apron. Kyruk was his friend, who was originally a slime. If it wasn't for his help, Lint would have been dead a long time ago. The guy was absolutely sure of this and may not look like it, but Kyruk is a reliable partner. They stopped near the shore, from where they had a beautiful view of the big city. Lint shouted that it was the city capital. They went inside the city and after crossing the gates of the capital, they found themselves on very busy streets. Lint smiled broadly, realizing that this was his new beginning as an adventurer. There were a lot of different signs and shops on the streets. Apparently, this was one of the shopping areas where the traffic of people is just crazy. While some sold their goods and communicated with people, Offering the best price, others brought supplies to merchants in the city on large horned animals harnessed to a cart. Walking further and further, Lint turned onto a quieter street and came across two girls who were quite openly dressed. One of them was standing with a pipe, blowing smoke. When they saw Lint, they started to smile. It was obvious that they belonged to different races and were not human. The girls rushed to Lint, trying to hug him. The guy waved him off and walked on, covered with a red blush. He looked down and asked Kyruk why he was looking at him like that. Right now, the guy needed to look into the guild first. Judging by the map he had in his hands, he was already in place. Stopping in front of one of the buildings, Lint shouted in a long voice, saying that the guild building looked very cool. Lint noticed that the guild gates were very large and filled him with hope. As expected from the guild headquarters, Kyukuru also began to flap his wings joyfully and exult. When the guy went inside the guild, he immediately saw a bunch of different adventurers who filled the tavern on the first floor. They were sitting at their tables and talking noisily. Two men were sitting at one of the tables, who were the first to pay attention to the new guest of the tavern. He called Lint a bad word from the men, and then called on his friend to turn around too. They saw that Lint had brought a monster with him. One of the men thought about it. After that, he gave out that this could mean only one thing, the guy is a tamer. The further Lint went forward, the more attention he began to attract to himself. The adventurers turned around, saying that his pet monster was ugly. Someone also threw insults at the guy and told him not to approach anyone. Lint sighed dejectedly, thinking that he really was a tamer, this was his profession. In this world, such a profession had perhaps the worst reputation. It could be said that the guy was on par with the janitor who was standing outside. Suddenly, someone stopped the young man. A huge man with a beard stood in front of Lint and said that tamers were not allowed to enter here. After that, he menacingly ordered the guy to get out. Lint raised his eyes and looked at the brute. The young man said that he would not leave here because he had come to find a job. Such situations, it should be noted, also happened often. The man grinned and then pointed at Lint with his finger. He said that if people like Lint joined the guild, their reputation would rapidly begin to decline. After that, the man threatened, saying that it would be better for Lint to leave before something happened. Lint did not respond to this. He just walked on, apologizing to the man. He was taken aback, starting to get very angry. The adventurer was unhappy that his request was ignored. He raised his voice and said that Lint had asked for trouble, after which he swung his fist. List managed to see this and then something happened that made many people very surprised. One of the men even spat out his drink in surprise. The huge adventurer was already lying on the floor, and there was a Kyukuryu on top, who was tormenting him. Lint calmly said that if a man wanted to start, he should be ready to answer for his words. This made the tamers hated and despised. They used their monsters to solve their own problems. Because of this, Lint's position was lower than the rest. Lint snapped his fingers, beckoning his pet Kyukuryu back. The guy said that there were a lot more conversations than actions on the part of the big guy. One of the men in the tavern raised his hand up and shouted that this sight was enough. He turned to Lint and said the guy could stop. Lint turned around. The man with the scar above his eye said that Lint is a talented guy and the capital is always open to newcomers. Waving his hand, he said that Lint could just forget about this misunderstanding. Lint released his abuser and went to the table to the bald adventurer. Pushing back his chair, the guy asked for a beer. By sarcastically asking if there was anything for the tamer, he elicited a smile from his new comrade. The man raised his glass and said a toast to the future of the young tamer. Lint supported him and said that he would drink to the health of his colleague. 
After that, the man laughed and said that, to tell the truth, there was nothing like that here. Lint was looking around at this time and noticed something interesting. He saw a monster in a cage. He asked the man if this was a cacatris case. He replied that there was an adventurer of the same rank who had conquered him. It was quite a commotion. Lint asked about how this monster got here. The man noted that it was in a rank monster. Afterwards, he also said that there was an adventurer of the same rank who was able to conquer Cockatrice. It was quite a commotion. Lint immediately thought it might be her. The guy raised two hands and showed cat ears, asking if that's what the a rank adventurer looks like. The bald man was amazed that Lint knew this person. The man said that her name is Light by Lena and one is quite well known in local circles. Lint talked with his colleague for a while longer, then left the guild building. Lint scratched his head, saying that the man kept telling him about Bylan. Lint had learned something from this and understood that the girl was an adventurer working alone. Lint began to remember the man's words. He praised Bylina admiringly, saying that her movements are so fast that they are simply elusive to their eyes. That's why she was called Light. Lint thought that it was better for him not to mess with such high-ranking people like her. The guy knew perfectly well that he would not be able to carry such a burden. Right now, the guy intended to finish the quest and earn some money. After a while, Lint was already standing in front of the sewer entrance, which the guild administrator had told him about. A wind blew through him from the inside. Since it was very dark inside, Lint took out a torch and said that it would be better for him to finish here as soon as possible and return. The guy started walking forward and soon faced his first enemy. It was either moles or possums that bared their teeth and rushed to attack. Lint's assignment was to destroy the monsters gathered in the sewers. This is necessary so that larger monsters cannot feast on them and settle here. Hiruk and Lint did a great job, but soon the guy realized that there was someone else in the sewer. He had the feeling that a high-level monster was nearby. The guy thought that as soon as he finished his quest, he would definitely check it out. I wondered if he would make it. It is simply impossible to ignore this. Lint walked further along the corridors and soon saw the monster he sensed. It was the Wolf Queen, who surpassed the guy in size. She looked at the guy angrily and got ready for a fight. Lint understood that this B-rank monster was the highest among them. The guy did not understand how such a monster could be here. Lint looked back and saw several people moaning in pain. Everyone was alive and the young man couldn't just leave them here. Lint decided that he had to protect them along with Kiruk. He had a magic dagger with him, a scroll. But this monster has a high level of protection, so it will be difficult to deal significant damage to it right away. However, it all boils down to the fact that a magic item needs to be used in such a situation. The Wolf Queen opened her mouth and rushed towards the young man. Lint screamed, pointing his hand at the monster. He gave the order to his pet Kiruk to go on the attack and protect the owner. The little demon obediently replied and headed into battle while the pet took the attack of the Wolf Queen head-on, thereby distracting the monster. Lint at this time began to go behind her, conducting his best attack. Lint shouted for Kiruk to step aside. Pointing his weapon at the monster, Lint summoned a fireball, which immediately began to fly at the wolf. After that, the guy used high-speed use of objects and comprehensive coverage. There was a big explosion and Lint happily began to celebrate. He took a direct hit, and all wolves were highly vulnerable to fire. But this, apparently, was not enough to immediately defeat a monster of this rank. The light from the explosion dissipated and the Wolf Queen jumped right at Lint. Lint was very scared. He understood that this was the end of his life. But then something happened that the guy couldn't have expected. Someone struck the strongest blow to the she-wolf. The guy covered himself, avoiding getting small pieces of wall and dust into his eyes. Opening one, Lint heard a familiar voice. The girl said that she had met the tamer again on her way. Lint pronounced the name of the adventurer, Bylina the Bright. The girl said that the tamer had probably already found out who she was. The girl held out one of the trophies that could have come from this monster. Lint picked it up and said that this item was quite expensive. Bylina waved her hand, saying that the guy's name was Lint. She also added that this thing would serve as proof that the guy had found this monster and was able to stand up to him. Lint began to get a little nervous, saying that it was Bylina who defeated the wolf. The guy couldn't accept something so expensive. Bylina laughed, saying that everything was fine and it was just a souvenir. Little Kuruk began to rejoice, attracting the girl's attention. Bylina bent down and stroked the pet, saying that he was also very good at fighting. The girl continued to stroke the pet, being at the level of Lint's waist. Because of this, the guy was able to see something interesting for himself. 
The girl called out to Lint, realizing that he was not answering her. Lilina took up her breastplate, saying that now she understood what was the matter. The girl called Lint slightly obsessed with female beauty. Lint shouted indignantly, saying that his reaction was caused by another. The guy tried to justify himself by saying that he had never talked to a rank adventurers before. Bylina smiled, saying that Lint is a pretty cute boy, after she said that they could talk about what Lint originally thought. Lint became even more nervous, saying that he did not understand Bylina at all. The girl leaned over to Lint and rested her finger on his chest, urging the guy to speak more freely. After that, she quickly went behind him and hugged him from behind. Lint chuckled, saying that he urgently needed to inform the guild about the completion of the task. Bylina said she would go with him. Now Lint couldn't tell for sure if everything was going to be okay. They headed back to the city and soon arrived at the guild headquarters. After they passed the assignment, Bylina insisted that Lint follow her. They arrived at one of the places where the man respectfully greeted Mrs. Bylina. Lint noticed that they had just arrived and were immediately let in first. The girl said that today would be a holiday and she would buy the whole menu here. Lint understood that the place looked expensive. After a while, the waiters began to bring food and make the table with a variety of dishes and snacks of meat and fresh vegetables. Lint kept thinking that everything looked very rich. The guy couldn't believe that he could actually eat it. Bylina smiled and wished you a pleasant appetite, encouraging you to try whatever Lint wants. Lint picked up a fork and tasted one of the dishes. Tears of happiness immediately began to appear in the guy's eyes. He said the food here is very tasty. The local food was really great and made him cry. Bylina continued to laugh as she watched all this. The girl said it was the first time she had ever seen someone cry while they were eating. After that, she screamed that it was time to start eating for real and Lint attacked the dishes. While Lint greedily tasted everything on the table, Bylina began a dialogue. The girl said that being a tamer is very unusual. She asked Lint if he knew about it. The guy raised his head in surprise, simultaneously stuffing spaghetti into his mouth. Lint said he didn't see anything special about it. After that, the guy added that now he is only a D-rank. Bylina stroked the little pet, saying that when they first met, intuition told her something. The girl felt that Kyuruk was the same as her. Bylina remembered Lint's words about what the guy had told her about slime earlier. Even monsters that have evolved cannot radically change their appearance. She didn't know if that was really the case. Lint said that he had never tamed other monsters before, so he also couldn't tell Bylina for sure. Bylina jumped up from her seat, shouting loudly that she had a proposal in that case. The girl added that it was, of course, beneficial for both of them. Lint didn't quite understand what he was talking about. He stared at the adventurer in silence. Bylina bent even closer and pointed at herself with her finger, asked to tame her. After she said that, Lint's chair started to fall back and the guy fell. The girl jumped to her feet, worriedly saying the boy's name. Bylina laughed, asking if the guy was okay. Lint started to get to his feet, saying that he was just very surprised about such a request. Lint began to pick up the food, which also fell to the floor and said that the girl, apparently, did not even know what it was like to tame someone of her level. Lint started to try to explain to her, but the girl beat him to it. Bylina walked up to the guy and took him by the chin gently saying that they needed to sign a contract. Lint said wordly that domestication doesn't work for humans and the like. Bylina started licking his face, saying that Lint had probably never tried to do it to confirm. Lint continued to stay in his place, continuing to find out why Bylina needed it. He didn't understand why the girl wanted to be tamed. Bylina continued to lick his face, saying that it would be much more fun for her. Lint was straying away from her. The guy said that the girl would lose her freedom in such a case. A smile began to appear on Bylina's face. The girl began to lower her hand down, saying that she would not mind if Lint played with her from time to time. Lint was embarrassed. He began to turn away from Bylina, wondering what would happen if he did. Bylina hugged the guy, saying that if he wanted to tame her himself, he could repay in this way. After they finished their dinner, they went upstairs. The girl asked what Lint would do now and what decision he would make. Lint couldn't stand it and shouted that he agreed and would do it. Bylina smiled contentedly, closing her eyes in anticipation. She hugged Lint and the guy said they could start the taming process. This caused Bylina to laugh and the girl said that Lint was a very honest guy. A tamer's unique ability is to establish a master-servant relationship with a demonic beast. Bylina herself thought that images would flash through her head while using the ability. She really wanted to know what was going on in Lint's mind. The very basis of acceptance is to give and take. They joined hands and Lint said that he was not sure that everything would work out. Lint said it hasn't been long since he tamed Kuruk. The girl started laughing, saying that Lint, apparently, is an inexperienced kid. This confused the young man. 
he told Bailina to stop making fun of him, and then firmly assured them that they could start. Bailina replied in a calm voice that she was ready. They began to slowly put their heads in their hands. Lint was at that time reciting a spell that is cast during the taming ritual. He said that he wanted to get protection and help from the girl, but in return he would have to give something. This time they were with their eyes closed and an exciting moment came for the girl. Lint finally said that he would give himself in return. Bailina said that these are pretty big words for someone who has never had a relationship with girls before. The guy confusedly said that he really couldn't give her much. It is for this reason that, in order for the ritual to take place, he gives himself to her. Lint also said that he knows somewhere deep inside himself that this is exactly what Bailina wanted. Bailina squeezed his hand and began to wonder enthusiastically. She understood all this as if a tamer could also become tamed. Lint explained that he was referring to possible conditions. The girl immediately agreed and leaned on the guy. Lint put his hand on her shoulder and asked if she agreed to such terms. Bailina said that she was satisfied with this way. Lint really didn't know what would happen next and how things would develop. The guy said that in this case, if Bailina agrees, he signs a contract. After a while, the girl said that she felt several times stronger. Lint looked at her and smiled, adding that he also felt her strong aura. Bailina thought it was because of the taming. Lint also said that his male pride began to fall, since Bailina is much stronger than him. The girl only replied that the young man needed to train. Lint said that he knows several options for taming, but doubts that in this case it is possible to get enough power. The tamer only needs trust. Bailina said it could work even on a dragon. After all, the guy was eventually able to tame an rank adventurer. She smiled and said that maybe Lint would really become a dragon tamer. The next day came. The guy went to the guild of the capital of the kingdom. The sun was already high on the street and the streets were filled with noisy crowds of people. The adventurers took turns entering several reception windows and taking tasks from the guild workers. Finally, it was Lint's turn and he stood at the counter. The guy's head immediately collapsed onto the countertop. The girl was a little scared, staring at the young man, Tired Lint, who was kept awake all night by Bailina, held out his hand and said that he wanted to register a group of two people. The girl, a little embarrassed, told the guy that she recognized him. This is Lint the Tamer, who registered yesterday. The employee noticed that the guy looked pretty tired. Lint confirmed it. Soon Bailina appeared from behind him, who sarcastically remarked that the guy should follow a sleep regime. After that, she assured that Lint was still young, so there was nothing wrong with that. When the girl saw Bailina, she was even more surprised. She immediately thanked Bailina for her work and stated that the adventurer was presented for promotion to the S rank and handed her the supporting documents. The employee bent down a little closer and whispered to Bailina that Lint had the rank of D. She doubted that it would be normal to have such a companion for Bailina. Then a familiar man's voice rang out nearby. It was the bald adventurer who had met Lint at the tavern. He exclaimed when he saw that the guy was still alive. Lint smiled at him and told him that he had managed to complete the task. The guy thanked his colleague for helping him yesterday. The man asked if Lint would really be in the group with Miss Bailina. After that, he noticed that Lint was damn good. Lint smiled and said that a lot had happened recently. Bailina added that Lint is really a wonderful guy. The man squinted at the people behind him and said that he had heard Lint rescue these weirdos in the sewers. Two guys immediately jumped up from their table when they saw the savior. They joyfully rushed to him, saying words of gratitude. The guys also noted that Lint did a great job yesterday. The guys thought that the tamer was able to defeat the wolf queen alone. Lint started waving his arms, trying to explain himself. The guild worker noticed that the young man had risen noticeably in the eyes of other people. They took the task and Lint said that now that he is paired with Bailina, they can only take tasks of rank C, despite the fact that their ranks S and D are combined. Bailina told Lint not to worry about it. The girl added that they would increase the rank of the group to the rank of S. Lint was surprised to ask if he could really get the rank of S. Bailina began to laugh, saying that of course they would do it. The girl said that they would become stronger and as cute as Lint and his pet Kiruk. Bailina said that they will be able to become the best team in history together and she is completely confident in this. The girl's face really looked happy and contented. Suddenly, Kuruk began to move in the pocket of his apron and make sounds. When Lit paid attention to him, he immediately asked what happened. Kuruk was pointing somewhere in the direction with his paw. When Lint started to look up, he saw a sword being dragged across the floor, and it was carried by the man from the guild with whom they had a quarrel. He walked up to Lint and started laughing, saying that he had been looking for a guy for a long time. His smile seemed completely insane. The man shouted that Lint was just a runt with a monster. After that, he uttered the phrase that the one who really laughs is the one who does it last. The man promised to kill Lint. 
Bailina looked at the guy and winked at him, then raised her hand up. The man threw back his sword and charged at Lint. Bailina rushed to meet him. The girl shouted that the tamer had shared his power with her. Focusing her gaze, Bailina struck at the evil adventurer, and a flash of light formed around him. The armor and clothes immediately began to shatter into small pieces. With each passing moment, the flash grew larger and gained in strength. The blow threw the adventurer far back and he crashed into a nearby column with his bulk, breaking it. Lint realized that the girl from his team had put too much effort into defending herself. He shouted Bailina's name, and then viciously asked what she had done. Bailina was shocked herself. She also addressed Lint by name and said that she thought she had created a wave with her punch. After that, the adventurer rushed into Lint's arms and screamed that it was just perfect. She had tried many times before, but she had never succeeded. Today she was able to do it effortlessly. Bailina was delighted and couldn't describe how incredible she was. After that, she abruptly jumped to her feet, freeing Lint. The girl bent her legs and sat down. Lint looked at how Bailina was warming up and asked the girl if she wanted to go somewhere before they went on a quest. Bailina said that there is a place on the outskirts. When Lint asked where exactly it was, Bailina just smiled. The girl told the guy to just follow her. Lint thought about her wanting to hold hands. The girl started laughing, telling the tamer that he was still shy of her. It's very strange, considering what happened between them quite recently. Lint hesitantly held out his hand to her and she took it. Bailina repeated so that the guy would believe her and just follow her. Lint thought that he wanted to hold Bailina's hand and see her happy face. Bailina said they were heading forward. After she turned around, she accelerated very abruptly, pulling Lint with her. The guy did not expect such a turn and screamed. She was rushing at great speed, demolishing the merchants who were walking down the street of the city. After them, there was only dust and they moved so fast that they even outstripped the wagons. Soon there was a big explosion. Bailina abruptly began to slow down, after which she said that they had finally arrived. Lint thanked God that he had survived. Bailina looked ahead and said that there was a dragon's nest ahead. Lint was very surprised, at first not believing the girl. Bailina explained that here they can find cubs to tame. Bailina said that now the guy will become a dragon tamer. Lint was shocked by this statement. The guy thought that it was more and more like a search for death. Bailina looked around, looking for the strongest cub. Lint was very surprised that there were other dragons nearby. After that, he thought again that he couldn't see, but he could hear perfectly well that the dragon's breath was coming from ahead. At that time, Bailina looked at one of the dragons, wondering if he was a good boy. Lint screamed sharply that something was going on underground. Bailina replied that it was all just in time. The dragon appeared like a moth that had flown into the light. The earth cover began to collapse. Lint shouted in panic that Bailina, apparently, wanted to make fun of him. A few moments later, a dragon appeared in front of them. He was terribly huge. Lint covered himself with his hand, still trying to see him. All around, the ground continued to collapse and explode. Bailina did not wait for the dragon to attack first, so she decided to act immediately. The girl shouted the spell fire bullet and rushed forward. After that, she was able to bring down the big dragon with a punch, as she had done earlier with that adventurer. The monster's head hit the ground loudly, and Bailina continued to dominate the fight. Bailina smiled and asked the dragon if he still wanted to fight. She raised her left hand and made a gesture that called for the monster to take action. The dragon began to rise to his feet, after which he began to wave his head to the sides, indicating that he no longer intended to resist. Bailina was glad of this decision. The girl turned to Lint and started waving at him, beckoning the guy over. Bailina, with a smile on her face, shouted for Lint to begin his attempts to tame the animal. Lint took his backpack off his shoulders and asked Bailina what she meant. He did not know that such huge creatures as this dragon could be tamed. Bailina patted the dragon on the head and said that he was a good boy. She was trying to show that the dragon was very obedient. Lint was embarrassed, saying that in his opinion, the dragon was just very afraid of Bailina herself. The girl immediately became indignant and mannerly asked the guy to repeat what he had just said. Finally, Lint approached the dragon, which bowed its head in front of the tamer. The guy put his hand to his head and began the process of taming. A bright light began to appear near the hand. Lint thought that at first glance it didn't seem that way at all, but the dragon turned out to be quite cute. The guy began to think about the fact that Bailina had unfairly beaten him and the dragon was now afraid. Lint has finished taming. The guy smiled and told the dragon that he would be fine now. Lint said he could guarantee his safety. Bailina pulled herself up, asking if everything had worked out. Lint confirmed it. The girl said that this was what she expected from the incredible Lint, and now he is a dragon tamer. Lint said Bailina had done the lion's share of their business together. The guy added that it was she who forced the dragon to obey. 
The girl smiled back, saying that Lint was quite modest. While Lina also noticed that she was also under his power, like Kiruk, and now the dragon. The girl said it was amazing, because he could tame creatures that were much stronger than him. Lint asked by Lina a little doubtfully about what kind of power she had in mind. The girl exclaimed joyfully that she was talking about the strength of the tamer which the young man owns. Violina said that their team consists of his tamed friends. She also noticed that Lint remains the most important thing in her, and this is precisely his strength. Lint was embarrassed, saying that he did not fully understand what Violina was talking about, so he intended to just agree with her. The guy thought to himself that it would be better for everyone. Violina smiled broadly again, saying that Lint did not see his own improbability at all. She joyfully announced the young man as Lint the Dragon Tamer. Bailina stroked the dragon and said it was time to give it some kind of name. Lint thought about it, because he wanted to pick up something that the dragon himself would like. After a couple of seconds, the young man exclaimed contentedly, holding up his index finger. He came up with a great idea and would like to name the dragon Gil. Lint turned to the dragon and pointed at it. The young man solemnly declared that now the dragon Gil is his warrior and from that day on he undertakes to serve. The dragon also began to rejoice at this event. When Bailina saw this, she immediately started laughing, saying that the dragon was really happy now. Lint also noticed that it was wonderful. Bailina thought that they could take the dragon on a raid. After that, she offered to start moving out. Lint said he agreed, but didn't know their direction yet. Bailina held out her hand and said that Lint just kept following her. She dragged him upstairs and they found themselves riding a dragon. Lint was surprised that they suddenly had a saddle. Bailina turned her head and said that she had a magic purse for adventurers on her belt. The girl said that you can put a lot of things in it. Lint assumed that such a thing was very expensive. Bailina threw the purse to the guy, saying that she was giving it back. Lint was immediately confused and did not understand if he could really use it. Bailina confirmed everything once again, saying that this is how the girl wants to express her gratitude. After that, she lifted the reins and the dragon gradually began to take off. They were ready to go into their first battle together with Gil. The huge dragon wings began to raise dust beneath them. After that, Lint thought that they were going to tame another beast. Bailina said that Lint understood everything correctly. The girl said that their next target was a demonic beast. Bailina began to urge the dragon to move faster, telling Gil that they would be able to track the new target from above. Gil sped up and Lint and Kiruk grabbed harder so as not to fall off. So, Lint's group flew over the canyon. They moved at a measured pace, looking for a demonic beast. Lint pointed sharply to one side, trying to get Bailina and Gil's attention. It seems that they were able to get on the trail. Bailina immediately focused and prepared to act. The girl began to get to her feet, leaving the saddle. Bailina said that she had never thought to meet a monster so close. After that, she jumped down from the dragon, rushing to the ground. Lint was afraid for the girl at first, but then realized that she probably understands what she is doing. The tamer turned to his dragon, which he ordered to follow the adventurer. Bailina resolutely continued to pursue her goal. The girl screamed that she would not let the beast escape from her. Lint tried to call Bailina, urging her to stop. When Bailina was only a few steps away from the monster, she jumped not him, obviously shouting that she had caught the beast. She wrapped her arms around him and stopped him. Lint was already running to Bailina, asking along the way if she was okay. Bailina turned to the guy and told him to get ready for taming right away. She knew perfectly well that they had to do it as quickly as possible. When Lint was about to run up to them, the beast's body triggered a large explosion of magical energy. This outburst immediately threw the guys aside. Bailina was not going to give up and immediately got to her feet, continuing to run towards the demon, simultaneously dodging fireballs. Lint was still on his knees. The guy was very worried about Bailina, who could have been hurt. The girl only laughed, saying that the beast's attacks were not strong enough to harm her. Suddenly, the beast appeared in front of them. Bailina opened her eyes wide, finally seeing what kind of demon appeared in front of them. It was the Fire Wolf Emperor. Lint immediately shouted that the demon had a very strong aura. Bailina agreed, saying that this monster belongs to the S rank. Bailina also added that its capabilities are amazing. Lint now understood that the aura of this rank made it clear that the monster's powers were simply immeasurable and completely unknown. Bailina told Lint to start. Bailina wanted the tamer to distract the wolf for about three minutes. Lint thought about it because this idea seemed just crazy to him, so they were able to identify the type of monster. Three minutes was quite a long time. All this hinted that the guy would have to fight one of the strongest monsters in this world, having such a big difference in ranks. Lint doubted whether he would be able to put up any resistance at all. After that, the guy interrupted himself, saying that now was not the time to delay. Lint was well aware that he still had Kiruk and Gil, 
who would surely be able to help. The guy knew perfectly well that this was his chance to rise to the S rank with his friends. Lint asked Bailina if one minute would be enough for her. Bailina smiled and said they were ready to start. Bailina encouraged the guy, saying that now the time is running out and she is counting on the guy. Lint, in high spirits, replied that he would not let them down. Bailina used the spirit skill. This skill was able to accumulate magic and energy particles. Difficult, but useful for obtaining explosive power. Now Lint understood why the girl needed so much time. Bailina can't fight without them right now. The team needed to detain the fire wolf. Lint sent Kiruk ahead. After that, he turned to Gil and shouted for the dragon to use his fiery breath and set the monster on fire. The dragon obediently opened its mouth and splashed its breath at the wolf. But it was obvious that fire was unlikely to be able to harm the fire wolf itself, because it was of the same element. The demon broke through the dragon's jet and jumped at Lint, opening its mouth. At the very last moment, Kyruk was able to save his master by fighting off the demon's attack. Kyruk flew into the wolf, knocking down its flight path. When Lint opened his eyes and saw this, he happily praised his little demon. The young man said that it was just incredible. It was much more than you would expect from an ordinary slime. The wolf froze in place, choosing a new moment to attack. Lint turned to Bailina, realizing that the monster was now aimed at Bailina, who continued to use her skill. The wolf rushed at her. Lint shouted the girl's name, followed by his dragon. Gil rushed to Bailina's defense, standing in front of her like a wall. The human shield worked perfectly, but Lint knew perfectly well that it was hard for a dragon to hold back such an onslaught of a demon. Lint shouted at Kiruk again to help his friend by force. Kiruk rushed forward, but the wolf created a fiery explosion around himself, which immediately pushed all opponents aside. It was obvious that the demon was getting angrier and angrier. Suddenly there was a huge explosion. Kiruk was already flying to the side, marveling at such a large force. Lint himself also jumped to the side, dodging the blast wave. Lint was knocked down, but continued to command his beasts. The guy pointed his hand at the dragon, urging Gil to attack with all the strength he has. The dragon opened its mouth and began to attack with a fiery breath, directing it at the demon. The wolf's body was consumed by fire. Lint began to slowly get to his feet, realizing that Gil was able to deliver a direct hit with his breath. It was indeed an incredible sight, but it was far from the end. Lint saw the girl raise the fire wolf above her. Bailina smiled and apologized to Lint for making the guy wait. Lint, in severe shortness of breath, shouted the girl's name, to which she only replied that it was necessary to tame the beast right now. While Bailina was holding the demon, Lint ran up to him and started using his taming skill. The wolf bent down, closing his eyes. After that, Lint wiped his forehead with sweat and said that they had finally coped. The guy said that the wolf is calm now. Surprisingly, Bailina defeated an S-rank monster in a second. Bailina smiled and said that Lint had just gone through his first battle with his warriors. She praised the guy, saying that he did a great job. Lint said he was desperate all the time, so he didn't see any other options. He also said that Gil and Kiruk did most of the work. Bailina noticed that the guy also fought as a tamer. Lint said the girl was right. After that, he abruptly grabbed his shoulder, which began to hurt a lot. The young man said that he was hit during the fight and now he feels like his bones are broken. Bailina took out a small dark bottle. She handed him a healing potion. Lint immediately thanked the girl. But after he saw that this subject was of a special class, he was greatly amazed by this because such things are very expensive. Lint opened the bottle and gave some potion to his pet Kiruk. Lin also praised him, saying that Slime was just fine in battle and saved the tamer's life repeatedly. Bailina told Lint not to forget about his new friend either. Lint knew right away that he would name the wolf after Kajero. Bailina exclaimed approvingly, saying that it was really a great name. Lint explained that it fits the battle that just happened. Bailina bent down to the wolf emperor and began to stroke him. The girl said that the demon seemed to really like his new name. Lint stroked the beast, then said that from now on, he asked the demon to lend his strength to their team. The wolf happily narrowed his eyes, letting out a confirming howl. Bailina explained that this choice of the demon was not accidental at all. She was just about to tell Lint the reason why she chose Kajero. Initially, the guy replied that the demon was very strong. Bailina confirmed this guess, adding that here we are also talking about the Lint itself and its internal characteristics. Bailina said that there is something in the world called spirit possession. She wondered how much Lint himself was aware of this and what he even knew. It was late at night and Lint's group needed to regain their strength after such a productive and hard day. The dragon himself hid in the forest while Lint and Bailina were in the capital. The guy started opening his eyes in the middle of the night, saying that they were here again. Bailina was sleeping peacefully, making light snores. Lint smiled, saying quietly that the girl was very tired today. 
but this is not surprising, because she fought so much. Lint thought that if he could master Kajero's powers, he would surely be able to help her in battle. The young man began to recall yesterday's conversation. Then she asked the guy about the possession of spirits. Bailina also said that it would not be superfluous, because all high-ranking tamers fight this way. Lint suggested that if he could master this technique, then he would be able to fight alongside Bailina herself. The girl said that this was true, but it was better not to talk about it. Bailina called Kajero to her. The wolf obediently approached and the girl bent down to him. Lint did not understand at that moment what Bailina wanted to do. The girl just smiled and at that moment a stream of fiery wolf energy gushed towards Lint. The guy was engulfed in fire. The guy stroked the wolf, finally realizing what Bailina meant. While Lint's whole body was on fire, Bailina said that the young man could try to use his new strength. She invited him to run a little ahead. Lint said he would do as Bailina asked him. The guy got ready and started to accelerate. The fire pushed him hard forward, which the young man did not expect at all. Only the stone wall, which was located in front, was able to stop the tamer. He hit it and slowly began to slide down. Bailina laughed, saying that Lint probably still needs to learn how to control this power. Lint, on the other hand, could not have imagined that this was the order of the day. Bailina tried to explain as simply as possible and said that Lint was now as strong as Kajero. Lint didn't understand why she had asked him to train with him. Bailina said it would be better to get used to his strength, because from tomorrow they will train a lot. Lint began to cry, realizing that she was not joking. He continued to lie in bed and reasoned that you really can't argue with Bailina. If he can control Kajero, his rank will immediately rise and it will be possible to create the team that the girl wants. Besides, the guy will be able to fight side by side with Bailina herself and everyone else. It will be an s rank team, but what should they be like in the eyes of Bailina, and what is the role of Lint in it? From these considerations, Bailina began to slowly open her eyes. Apparently, she heard Lint's quiet voice. The girl rubbed her eyes and asked if she had really fallen asleep. He immediately apologized to Lint, but the young man objected, saying that she must be very tired from the battles. But Bailina said it wasn't the battles that had exhausted her so much. The girl took a jug of water and began to pour herself over. She also said that she was tired because of their end of the day, because Lint did a great job with her at night. Bailina suddenly threw her leg up, saying that they had made a lot of progress today. Lint agreed, because a lot really happened today. Bailina began counting off her fingers, softly pronouncing the names of their team members and soon said that in her opinion, they had already completed their staff. The girl told how she sees the scheme of the team's actions, Kiruk will be at the forefront, because he has excellent defensive abilities. Then comes the main force, which is Lint himself, Bailina and Kajero. For the rear, an archer or a magician is ideal. Lint thought that Gil would get this role. Bailina said that everything was right, while Bailina would be able to help him if anything happened. After that, she said that they also now need a good healer in the team. She said Lint could also be suitable for the role. Lint thought about it, saying that almost every team has a healer. The guy didn't know for sure if they would be able to find him or not. Bailina said that they were quite capable of this task. The girl explained that she already has some information on this matter. Lint was very surprised, because he had not even heard about all this before. Bailina said that the saint is due to visit the capital soon, so this is a great opportunity to recruit into the team. Lint thought that Bailina had gone completely crazy. The girl hit the water with her hands, saying that she was seriously saying all this. Bailina intended to tell them all about their situation. Lint covered his ears and started shouting that he refused to listen any further. Bailina pressed the guy with her hands and began to ask what scared him so much. Bailina urged the young man to calm down. Lint continued to resist. Lint was well aware that the one who is called enlightened by the gods is the strongest magician in the world. The Holy of Holies is the highest magical rank that could only be earned. Lint had already begun to imagine how his posters were hanging all over the city and the townspeople were looking at them. The young man said that he would become the main enemy of mankind if he allowed himself such audacity. Bailina smiled and said that it would be great. Lint urged her to think about her words before, and also asked the girl not to joke like that anymore. Lint knew perfectly well that a saint was definitely not his level to tame a magician like his dog. Bailina said that the girl herself is very beautiful, and Lint thought about it. After that they went to bed and the next day Bailina was already walking quite happy to the rest of the group. The girl was holding several sheets with the guild's instructions in her hands. She said she had picked out great options for today's workout. Lint got to know them and said it was too much for them. Bailina objected, saying that they could handle it. Bailina also added that if they make a mistake, 
they will be able to escape immediately. She also said that those who don't take risks never get the best for themselves. Besides, Bailina really thought it would be a great workout for the guy. Lint noticed that Bailina was acting very energetically today. Bailina asked where Kajero was now. The guy replied that the wolf resides in the realm of spirits. Bailina smiled and said it was a practical solution. She also added that he can come and go completely unnoticed. In this they differ greatly from Gil. Lint thought that this was another reason why Bailina chose the wolf. The girl explained that if Lint could control his kind, he would become a real magician. Bailina also noticed that Lint is already pretty good at this and even she is not so strong at this. Lint read that the first quest is to destroy monsters and collect explosive herbal fruits. Bailina assured that such a task would be easier for them. They arrived at the green location and Bailina said that most of today's quests will take place here. The dragon began to land and the girl said that now they are at the place called So, a meadow that will never grow back. They got off the dragon and Bailina thanked the beast for the work done. Lent continued to familiarize himself with the quest, seeing that its difficulty was recommended only from the B rank. The name seemed rather strange to the young man. Bailina laughed and said that maybe they called it bad, but she was sure that there were monsters here. Lent knew perfectly well that he had absolutely no reason not to believe Bailina. A huge beetle jumped out of the ground at them, but Bailina did not lose her vigilance. The girl did not even make a turn towards the threat and repelled the attack by raising her hand. She said that most of the inhabitants here are just bugs. That's how Lint's training started. The guy stood in front of the location and immediately called Kajero, who shared his strength with the owner. Of course they finished all the quests they took. Lint tried again and again, but it was still difficult for him to cope with the strength of his S-rank pet. As soon as he tried to do something, he was immediately thrown aside. As expected, it wasn't easy at all, but Lint managed to learn something really important while he was trying to interact with the wolf. If he uses a Kajero, it doesn't matter who it is, the Worm Master or the Dwarf Death Worm. He could kill them with the fire of his wolf, which covered him like a protective aura. Vilina made a remark to the guy, saying that if he continues to deal with monsters in this way, they will not be able to collect any materials that fall from them. After a while, Bailina decided that the guy should take a break. They settled down by a huge oak tree and built a fire. He should have had a good snack now to gain strength. Lint cooked a dish in a frying pan and put it on plates. After that, he handed one of them to Bailina, saying that he was able to cook food from the killed monsters. Bailina was amazed as soon as she saw the appearance of the dish. She tasted it a little and said it was very tasty. The girl exclaimed that Lin was an incomparable cook. She joked again that the guy could open his own restaurant in the capital. Lint explained that he learned to cook when he lived alone for a long time. Bailina said that she would not have thought that potions could be used in cooking. The girl liked raw meat and its taste the most. Lint was a little startled by this fact. Lint thought about it. He understood that Bailina was a beastman, so she could easily eat such a thing. The girl called him, saying that by hunting for explosive fruits, the guy began to use Kajero's abilities better. Explosive fruits are plant-type monsters with human-like faces that appear from underground and explode on impact. Besides, they were very tasty. Lent said it was pretty hard for him at first. When they exploded, he sent a shield and protective images to Kajero. They were all safe just because Kajero had time to react. Bailina smiled and said that Lint had grown noticeably. Then she put her foot on the fire and put it out. It was time for them to return home to the capital. Bailina leaned forward, asking if they still had any quests. Lint said that he would check everything now and added a minute later that they had the most dangerous one left. Bailina urged him to go and finish their mission. The end of the training is coming soon. Lint had the feeling that he was able to synchronize with Kajaru very well during this time. Right now, Lint had one last thing left. And this is inventing and sending images to Kajura. Now they could use all this as a serious weapon. The last mission was to exterminate monsters that were hybrids of several animals. Beaver-like cats with a horn on their head. They were rushing to attack the guy. As soon as they got close to him, Lint jumped up, dodging the attack. After that, the guy stretched out his hand towards the monsters and Kajaru began to incinerate them. These were the last ones. Lint exhaled and said that according to his calculations, he should have done it by now. The guy asked Bailina, and the girl said that Lint did a great job. Bailina jumped to the guy and happily said that now Lint can finally control Kajero's body. She saw everything and considered this sight simply incredible. Lint smiled back and held out his fist to the girl. He declared that he could now fight alongside her. Bailina replied that she was really looking forward to this moment. After they went to hand over their quest, they immediately attracted the attention of a crowd of people. 
The residents were discussing something violently, saying that it was incredible. In front of them were the resources obtained from the most recent quest. Lots of fangs and animal carcasses. Residents were surprised to ask if the adventurers had managed it themselves. Violina waved her hand, saying that this was indeed the case. The girl said that she found them, and Lint destroyed them. The guy blushed, saying that he didn't do it alone. Lint added that Kajero's great merit was here. Bailina hugged him and said that this was the absolute norm, because the guy is a tamer, which means that he should fight like that. Now she suggested that he go out and have a drink somewhere. The residents shook Lint's hand, saying that he was very good. They also thanked him for the work he had done and for protecting the village. One of the women said that there are a lot of these rabbits in the area. Fields were destroyed and cattle were attacked. Ordinary people would definitely not be able to cope because they would simply be crushed by the number. The villagers collected all the money from the village and gave it to the guild, as the adventurers might have noticed. However, it is amazing that such a strong man came to a poor village. After that, they mentioned someone else, comparing him to Lint. Lint was surprised to ask if there really were any other adventurers here. Residents said that another person had come to them earlier, although he was separate from the guild. The guys thought about it. Later, they heard some scolding coming from a barn nearby. The wounded man was lying on bales of hay. He was assisted by local church workers, asking the Lord to be more patient. The man shouted that he had come a long way for the mere pennies they offered him. The stranger was outraged that the residents did not have a single potion. He cursed the village he had decided to go to. Lint and Bailina went inside to familiarize themselves with the village assistant. Bailina indignantly said that this man was some kind of self-proclaimed B-rank adventurer. Lint quipped that the man had apparently been bitten by baby rabbits. The adventurer stood up and urged the young man to watch his tongue. He also added that he is a member of a Vermont trading company. Bailina turned around and asked Lint if he knew anything about this organization. The guy replied that he only knew about its name. A woman from the village clarified by saying that they usually sold various food, and then decided to ask for help against these rabbits. Lint wanted to know more about the residents' problems. The woman also explained that they were charged three times more money for such a service than those for which they had agreed. Lint said it was all against the rules of the treaty. Bailina said that if they were completely beaten up, they probably wouldn't be able to help in any way. The man shouted for Lint and Bailina to shut up. He maliciously announced that he was a representative of the Vemont. Therefore, if he goes where he needs to go and delivers a few words, the guys will be in trouble. Bailina said softly, Flash. The man's face changed dramatically when he found out who was standing in front of him. He first asked again, and then said that the girl was a rank of beastman herself. Bailina continued to look at him, folding her arms over her chest and added that her rank was already as the adventurer fell to his knees and begged him to forgive him for such audacity. Bailina reminded the man of the potion he had mentioned earlier. The man started waving his arms to the sides, pretending that this did not happen at all. After that, he smiled and said that as soon as he was healed, he would immediately leave this village. The representative of Vemont did not want to be forever in debt to this village. Bailina took out a small bottle of potion and began pouring it over the man's head. He immediately apologized, but Bailina clarified that she was only selling this potion, so the man would be in their debt. His wounds healed immediately. The villagers were very surprised that such a thing was even possible, because the man recovered right in front of their eyes in a matter of seconds. Lint smiled and explained that Bailina can restore anyone, even when only one ear is left. The only thing is that it is often very expensive to go out. The man from the Vemont Trading Company joyfully examined his hands, realizing that he was now completely healthy. He began to bow to Bailina, expressing his gratitude to her. Bailina replied that she couldn't put thanks in her pocket. The man took out his wallet and said that he would pay and wanted to know how much he owed. Bailina smiled, holding a small bottle in her hands. She said she was demanding the full price for it. The girl also suggested that the adventurer knows the price himself. When the guys finished their business, they jumped on the dragon and began to leave the village. Lint noticed that Bailina was unusually angry. She noted that it was because of that guy, because she did not understand how it was possible to be so greedy. Lint said it was a great feeling. Bailina replied that such people only spoil the impression of adventurers. Lint replied that it was, but in the end, only that man remained upset. Bailina agreed. At that time, there were many pets in the barn walking next to him and defecating. Bailina replied that he would not be able to do anything else in this life and his debt could be pinned on the company. When they arrived, they habitually left Gil in the forest near the capital. They said goodbye to him and had to decide what to do next. Bailina said that they can take the tasks to the guild for now. The girl also intended to ask about Lint's promotion to the rank of C. Lint added that they could still have a snack at the tavern, 
wash up and sleep, because Bailina also probably wants this. After a while, when Lint and Bailina were already in the guild, something made the girl very angry. She screamed that she couldn't accept it and considered the circumstances strange. As it turned out, due to the fact that Bailina took the guy and led him, and also has a rank much higher than his, the guild could not raise him. That's exactly what Bailina was going to aggressively resolve. The guild employee only said that they have such rules. It's just that according to Bailina, they can't raise Lint. If a guy doesn't have his own powers, then there can be no question of a raise. Bailina immediately accused the guild worker of not even knowing the details. The girl pointed at Lint and said that he had tamed a whole dragon. Bailina immediately attacked the employee with new pressure, saying that, apparently, she had nothing even to answer this. The employee only laughed, saying that Bailina was clearly confusing dream and reality. The girl behind the counter said that she had already seen many who wanted to rise at the expense of their high-ranking friends. It is for this reason that she is forced to refuse. Lint approached Bailina and began to calm her down, telling her not to make a fuss. He decided to find out for himself what the guy can do to get a promotion, since they don't believe them. The guild worker said that they have a special exam for such things. She also added that it was light, and for dragon tamers, for sure. She also added sarcastically that the guy could take it with him tomorrow morning. Lint took these words seriously and, after thinking a little, said that he would ask him to come after breakfast. The girl laughed, saying that it was just fine. After that, she added that she would never believe it. Lint asked if there was anything else needed. The girl thought about it and said that the guy would also need to fight with their examiner and show what C-Rank is capable of. On the way home, Bailina continued to be indignant, saying that there was clearly something wrong with this employee. Bailina added that it all makes her very angry. She didn't like it at all right away, so Bailina urged Lint not to pay attention to it. Lint explained that this was just the fate of the tamer. Bailina accused the guy of low self-esteem. They remembered that the guild employee laughingly said that the examiner himself would have the rank of B. Bailina again said that she was only disappointed by all these conversations. Lin also said that the girl's name was, like, Mira. In general, she seemed nice to him. Bailina got angry and when Lint saw this, he immediately apologized, saying that his sharp tongue was spoiling everything. They were already approaching the hotel. Bailina stretched and said that they already needed to forget about it for the night. Lint spread his hands and said that he actually had an exam tomorrow. It was morning. Bailina was still fast asleep. Lint was already on his feet and almost finished with his exam fees. Lint did not wake the girl and gently said good morning to her. He also added that she always sleeps much longer. The guy turned to Kiruk and said it was time for them to move out. A man in armor stood in front of Lint. He was holding his sword, which he slung over his shoulder and introduced himself as a ghoul. He also said that he would be conducting the guy's exam. A guild worker saw Kiruk and said that this must be his very small and cute dragon. The ghoul threw back the scabbard, saying that this was all an unnecessary farce. The examiner licked his blade, after which he sarcastically said that he would give Lint time to return home to his mother before he smashed it or broke a couple of bones. Lint continued to stand confidently in place, after which he immediately asked if he could use pets. He wanted to know about this right away, before starting. The ghoul laughed, saying that Lint could certainly use them, at least all of them. The man was sure that this would definitely not help the tamer. The guild worker asked if it was okay to say that at all. The girl explained that Gull has already retired, but he is still a former B-rank adventurer. Lint smiled and said that after he got the information he needed, he had nothing to worry about and they could start over. The girl raised her hand and said that she was declaring the beginning of the exam for the advancement of the adventurer Lint open. No one immediately went on the attack. Both of them continued to stand in place, and Lint put his hands together all together. The ghoul turned to the guy, saying that he shouldn't attack in vain, because then he would start first. The ghoul rushed forward and immediately swung his sword. Kiruk arrived in time and easily parried the blow with his blade, stopping him. After Kiruk threw it back a little, again greatly surprising Gull and Mila himself, the ghoul started waving his head, saying that he just didn't hit the right way. At that moment, Lint shouted Kajero's name and a bright flame ran around him. The ghoul was watching all this and couldn't figure out what kind of nonsense was going on here. Lint accelerated towards the ghoul and kicked him in the arm. The sword immediately flew out of her side, leaving the man without a means of attack. The blade flew off to the side and plunged into a tree. Mila saw this and fell to her knees in disbelief. Lint stood in front of the ghoul and said that the man was unarmed. The guy wanted to know if he should continue. The ghoul started shouting for the guy to stop and the man had already understood everything. Lint leaned closer, saying he hadn't quite heard. Shoal shouted that the guy had passed and would receive his rank. 
Suddenly, another voice came from behind the ghoul. It was Bailina. The girl approached them and said that she had taught them earlier that a book should not be judged by its cover. Bailina stopped and yawned. The ghoul immediately screamed in shock when he saw his teacher. He couldn't understand why the girl was traveling with this ignorance. Bailina said he was her master. After that, Bailina smiled and said that she could continue the fight, because the judge had not left the fight yet, which means the exam is still in progress. The ghoul only laughed in response. The man said it was an individual exam, so she couldn't interfere. But before he could finish, he was already hit in the face. Bailina urged him to keep his eyes open. The ghoul fell to the ground, losing several teeth. Nero was very scared. Lint approached her and addressed her as a judge. The guy asked if he had any violations. The girl was pointing her finger behind her back, her eyes wide open. Lint understood what she was talking about, confirming everything. He then introduced his dragon by naming it. The guy added that Gil was a little late. After everyone came to their senses, Ghoul and Mira bowed their heads and asked to accept their apologies. They also added that they really could not have imagined that such a thing was possible. Mira also asked the guys to forget their mistake. Bailina waved her hand to the side, saying that everything was fine and they would go to the guild meeting. Mira took out a small envelope and handed it to Lint. The guy was pleasantly surprised to recognize his new guild card. The guy noted that they work fast. Mira said that now Mr. Lint is an adventurer of the rank of C. Mira also added that she did everything quickly because of her behavior yesterday, as she wanted to rehabilitate herself. Then she turned to Bailina and clasped her hands together pleadingly. The girl asked never to talk about it, because she does not want to lose her job. After that, they saddled the dragon and flew about their business. Lint took out the map and was glad to have it updated. He showed it to Kyuruk and noticed that the C rank cards were already shining and shimmering very beautifully. With all this, Lint is now also a full-fledged adventurer, which he was very happy about. Bailina smiled and added that very soon the guy could become a B or a rank. After that, Bailina said that they were going on. Lint thought that the girl had already been able to find a healer. Bailina confirmed everything, saying that the saints should already be waiting for them. Lint was surprised. The guy said that even if you say that they are familiar with Bailina, she is a saint of the divine people. Bailina confirmed everything, saying that they could not meet just as friends. After that, Bailina said that the saint was also an S-rank adventurer, and it was true. Lent said that the girl must be very talented, because she is a holy virgin and an adventurer at once. Bailina laughed, saying that Lent would soon see for himself. She also added that she was currently overwhelmed with cases and Lint would need to look after her. After that, Bailina decisively exclaimed that they were now going to get the best healer in the world. They embark on a magnificent journey through the sky. Lint, on the other hand, remained slightly agitated. Meanwhile, a certain person put his hand on the book. The girl was indignant that some annoying noise was bothering her outside. She thought that there was also something very important right now. The girl needed to clearly understand what she should do now. At the same time, the siege of the city was taking place. One of the knights shouted for the warriors to start breaking through the city gates. The battering ram turned the gate into splinters and the army broke through. A large-scale battle began. Amid the clanging of swords and the clatter of shields, screams could also be heard. Someone ordered to find the priest, saying that he must be somewhere nearby. The girl in the cassock went to the window and looked down. She asked about how things were progressing on the battlefield. She was told that Cardinal Karam seemed to be a simple man with power. He has such great power that he has divided it in two in the lands of the gods. It seems, after all, that he was not so simple, although he really had the power. But apparently, this is the least of his worries. His ability to act, his ability to comprehend the human heart, as well as something else, the most important thing. The main thing was the best time to realize the opportunity. Right now, they could use the strongest card in their arsenal. The Baron, the head of the Dragon Knights, is not here yet. After that, the girl began to turn away from the window and thought that such a decision might be wrong. She still wondered if the Cardinal could really do it. Suddenly, an explosion occurred in the tower where the Holy Virgin was located. The explosion itself was of great force and began to spread splinters and stones in different directions. The people who stayed below saw all this and did not understand what had happened there. They understood that the tower just exploded. It just seemed impossible to them. Afterwards, they all sighed when they saw the Holy Virgin. They were very worried about her and started asking if she was okay. The girl asked the servants not to worry, because she just couldn't find a way out. After that, the Holy Virgin loudly uttered her question, trying to find out where her father was now. She insisted on answering her. 
The two men in armor were greatly surprised by this. Lint and Bailina were already on their way to the Holy Virgin. Lint thought they were sweating to the Holy Lands to meet her. Bailina said that was what she wanted at first, but the plans changed dramatically. Lint began to learn more about what their future plan was. Bailina said that there was just someone she would like to talk to before visiting there. After that, Bailina said that they had an hour to fly to the capital. The girl said that since they had nothing to do now, Lint could tell some interesting story. The guy told Bailina to give him at least a topic or an example. The girl said that she would be interested to know about how they met Kiruk and how Lint became a tamer. Lint smiled, saying that these two narratives are very boring and boring. Bileza laughed and leaned against Lint, saying that it was quite normal and she wanted to hear about them anyway. The guy started by saying that he was born in the village of Fremel, which is on the border with the Holy Land. They also had a very small guild there, if you compare the one in the capital. The guy also said that he was an unregistered adventurer, but Rumi's girlfriend helped him with money, always giving a little more for the tasks he did. The guy lived in a small abandoned house and made plans. His only way of survival was to become an adventurer. He needed to buy the necessary equipment, but there was no money at all. As soon as he had a chance for big money, high-ranking colleagues took him away. Lint was upset by all this. The guy threw his glove aside, which he was stitching, saying that it was all in vain. Lint blamed himself for not having any normal skills at all. The guy knew perfectly well that he needed to get at least something, otherwise he would not see any money or life. Lint thought that this world was actually quite harsh. The guy looked up, where there was a hole in the roof and the stars were visible. He decided that he would go to study and decided to do it from tomorrow. The guy built himself an imitation weapon out of wood and began practicing on the bushes nearby. He practiced for the next few days. He continued to make his way forward and suddenly realized that he was seeing some new and unknown landscape around him. The guy couldn't believe that he was lost and things were bad. Although in this case, Lint decided that something unknown might be waiting for him ahead. Now he is determined to go forward to meet adventures. Walking on, Lint suddenly stumbled and rolled down. When he emerged from behind a bush, the first thing the guy saw when he was able to get up was a small cave. Now Lint began to wonder if this was the only entrance to it. If the cave is simple, then yes, but if it's some kind of dungeon ruins. The guy thought that it could also be the ruins of something else. He took out his torch and lit it. When Lint went inside and found some part of the dungeon, he was surprised by its size. The guy thought that the space here is quite large. He touched one of the walls, realizing that the stones here were not real. This immediately led the guy to the idea that a human hand had definitely been here and Lint was sure of it. When he walked forward a little more, he realized that these were ruins after all. Lint was delighted, realizing that his luck had befallen him. There may be treasures ahead. Lint started forward, but suddenly found that the passage ended quickly. He realized that this was the end, and then wondered why they didn't have enough space. There were several sheets under his foot. The guy understood that it was a bit of burnt paper and Lint couldn't even imagine that it could somehow look like a treasure map or something like that. On the sheet, the guy saw a girl who was almost completely naked. He was disappointed by this, realizing that everything here is littered with only such images. Lint viciously started kicking the paper under his feet. But suddenly he noticed that among everything there were sheets of high-quality expensive paper. It was already noticeably different in value. The guy bent down and picked up several sheets, lighting them with a torch. In the lower right corner, he noticed an illegible coat of arms that marked each page. Perhaps this is the treasure he needs. Lint thought that if he collected everything, he could make money. He found some sheets and took a break, starting to read the pages. Lint quickly realized that it was some kind of textbook. The young man held up the papers and shouted joyfully that he had finally found something unusual. It usually costs more than any treasure. Lin soon realized that it was a textbook on taming. The guy was upset and did not understand why he was the one who got caught out of everything possible. It is said that there used to be fierce warriors who forced even dragons to obey a skill that allows you to control monsters and make them fight for you. Lint thought that these descriptions seemed useful, but there is the other half of the coin. He was very confused and, thinking, closed his eyes. The hero was thinking about how it was possible to walk with these monsters everywhere and how he would live alone among the monsters. And people don't consider it a full-fledged job, because tamers only do what they use the power of the trained, and they themselves can't fight at this time. The hero perfectly understood their thoughts and why they did not join the group, because why do they need such people? Therefore, the textbook he found has broken even the slightest hopes, and he thinks he will have to be patient. However, if Lind continues to be a low-ranking adventurer, 
then the book will help a lot in battles because he does not even have money for weapons. A life in which you can't see beyond 10 minutes. Therefore, the hero decided that he would take everything from life and become a tamer himself. He was very determined because he had thought about his choice well. So he slapped his knee and said it couldn't get any worse, so he would become a C-rank loner and be cool. Lint said with a smile that adventures are full of excitement and he will not miss the chance to enjoy them, so he will become a tamer. He thought that perhaps this was his calling. The hero illuminated the pages of the book with a torch and read the legend of the tamer. He was surprised that dragon tamers really existed, it shocked him. Then he found pages for beginners. Immediately after that, the hero declared that this was what he needed. He assumed about what was written there and then began to read the contents, which began with the possible number of tamed monsters. After that, there were pages about how to tame monsters, about the difficulty of taming about tricks, and it was all important to him. Lint then found information about monsters and claimed that it was valuable information for him. The hero thought that it was very strange that everything in the book was remembered quite easily. The guy smiled and said that he was wondering which monsters could be tamed and how he was looking forward to it. The hero imagined a minotaur that would be strong and resilient or some kind of bird to fly. And he will also be very lucky if he can find their egg. Lint immediately dismissed these thoughts because these monsters are too strong for him, and besides, there will be nowhere to fly because he is a loner. The guy noticed that the book also talks about who can be tamed first, and if it doesn't work out with monsters, then you can try animals. After finishing reading, the guy got to his feet, took a torch and lifted the pages of the book up, after which he joyfully announced that he needed to get out already, and also that he hoped that he would come across someone good. After finishing the story about the book, Lint and Bailina continued to fly. The guy touched the girl, and she asked him to stop. He asked with a smile if she didn't like it, but the girl replied that it wasn't about that. Bailina turned to him over her shoulder and asked him to show the coat of arms that was on the book if he could do it. The guy replied that there was no problem. And then I thought about the fact that in truth he is so dirty that he is incomprehensible. He added that, depending on how you look at him, he can become a star. The girl took out a book and showed a symbol in the form of an eight-pointed star on it, asking if it looked the same. Lint was very surprised that she knew this symbol. Bailina confirmed that she really knows him. The guy began to pester with questions about what it means and how valuable this book is. The girl thought about it and said that she was really very valuable. The adventurer put her hand to her mouth and thought about where to start. The hero was very tense and was waiting for an explanation. He also noticed that Bailina is very beautiful when she is serious. The girl blushed at these words. And then she shouted about why he was embarrassing her so much. The guy apologized with a smile. Bailina, deciding to change the subject, started talking about the book. The girl started talking about the fact that this book is with a star, as he called it. Lint asked what was wrong with it and who wrote it. She replied that she would explain it gradually. Bailina suggested to continue. The guy did not understand what exactly to continue and the girl explained that she meant the story about his meeting with Kiruk. Lint looked at his pet and said it was more than just a meeting. She was weird. Somewhere deep in the forest, the guy flew towards a tree, skidding through the grass and eventually crashing into it with his head. The goblin who hit him gave him a very angry look and walked away, leaving him on the ground. When Lint got up from the ground, he said that everything had not gone according to plan and also wondered why the goblin had not agreed to be tamed. He didn't expect it to be so difficult. However, he was well aware that he had nothing that he could give them in return under the contract. And at the same time, these are the weakest monsters. So resigned, the guy decided that he would take the slug. This will be enough for the first step. After that, he started calling the slime. After passing through the bushes, he noticed slugs on the ground behind them. Lint smiled that there were five of them at once and decided to start with the biggest one. However, after looking closely, the hero was very surprised that two slugs offended one. 
The slug was very scared and shaking. Lint, peering out of the bushes, thought that the two attackers looked the strongest. The frightened slug abruptly turned around and looked at the guy. Lint was surprised and wondered why he was looking at him like that. The scared slug looked at him pleadingly, and the guy was surprised by the desperate look so much, after which he came out from behind the bushes and said that it seemed he had no choice, so he would help. Lint bent down and said that he would save it, but in return the slug would need to be repaired. The guy will tame him, and then he will not be able to complain. The slug began to nod understandingly. Lint could only hope that he really understood. Then he stretched out his hand, thinking that he didn't look like a creature that could help, but this was his first step. The guy concentrated, closed his eyes, and used the taming skill. After that, he continued to hold his hand outstretched, opened his eyes, and saw that nothing had changed with the slug. The slug continued to just stand there and stare at Lint. At that moment, he realized that he could now read the monster's mind, and thanks to this, he realized that he was thinking about taming. Then the slug turned around, looked viciously in front of him, and began to leave. Lint was very confused and asked where he had gone. The guy shouted about why he was leaving, reminding him that the monster had needed his help before. Lint continued to shout that even he can defeat them, and it's not dangerous for him at all, so he asks the tamed monster to return. Lint turned around and saw the previously attacked slugs begin to leave. He and his tamed slug watched them go. And then the slug exhaled very happily, announcing the victory. Lint squatted down next to him and said he was too complacent. And then he realized that the monster had protected him, for which he thanked him. The slug was happy to help. Lint put his hand behind his head and said that in any case, he now understood what taming meant and also noticed that, in addition to all these difficulties, there is a limit on the number of tamed monsters. Therefore, Lint said that he would remove the shackles from the newly tamed slug. The monster looked at the guy strangely, and he confirmed that he would indeed take it off. Lint got to his feet and told the slug that he now believed the slug could survive. So he said goodbye to him. The hero began to walk back through the bushes, and the monster ran after him with high jumps. After catching up, the slug began to jump around the hero, and he confusedly reminded him that he was already free, so he did not understand why he did not stay. The monster continued to follow him. Then the tamed slug jumped onto Lint's shoulder, completely confusing him. The guy asked me to stop. The monster sat on the hero's shoulder and showed a confident look. Lint asked if the slug was laughing at him. After that, he exhaled and said that if the monster had nowhere to go, then in that case he could follow him, but he should behave himself. The slug happily agreed, and Lint said that then he was glad to meet you. Then he began to think about giving him a name, because no matter how you look at it, he can't just be a slime. Then the guy shouted at him a variant of the name Kuruk, asked if he liked it, and explained his choice by saying that it looked like jelly. The monster began to jump joyfully on the guy's shoulder, and he smiled and said that, apparently, he really liked it. Which means they've decided that his name is Kuruk now. Lint began to say that this was how they began to travel together, continuing their journey through the forest together. Kuruk was sitting on his shoulder, and the guy was pointing the way. However, at some point the slug began to attract the hero's attention. He decided to look at him and asked about what happened. The monster abruptly jumped off the guy's shoulder when he realized that he was paying attention to him and began to run in some direction. Lint ran after him and shouted for him to stop. The guy asked about what he was doing and reminded him that they didn't have time for it anyway. Kuruk continued to insist on his own, calling for himself. Lint was very unhappy with his arbitrariness. The guy kept running after the slug leading him, and then something caught his attention, so he stopped and looked down at his feet. Lint fell to his knees in surprise and began to examine the bells, realizing that they were very rare. Kuruk was happily jumping around. The guy picked one of the plants and said in surprise that they were used to make complex potions. He then turned to his timed monster and asked if he had seen him collecting them. The slug nodded in agreement. 
A very joyful hero lifted the tamed slug up in his arms and began to talk about how incredible he was, as well as idolize him. And then he began to zealously collect plants, saying that he seemed to have earned money in three days at once. Then he turned to the slug and said with a smile that he would treat him to a delicious meal today. At that moment, the slug began to eat the grass and nod. The guy called out to Kuruk and, in confusion, told him that these plants were very expensive. However, after he agreed, they continued to collect grass together. Lint and Kuruk began to return from the forest. Village. The guild office. There is a lot of life on the street in front of him, many people sell goods, transport them on a cart. The guild worker Rimi is frustrated sorting the sheets, putting them together. She thinks about the fact that Lint has not been in the guild for several days. Then she put the sheets in a folder and began to wonder if he was all right. And at that moment, the conversations of the people in the guild caught her attention. They asked about what kind of baby he was and if he hadn't died. The guild workers Rimi turned around and saw two men touching Lint with smiles on his face who came after a walk through the forest. The girl immediately ran, pushing the other men aside on the way, and took the guy by the cheeks with her hands, greatly embarrassing him. Lint looked at Rimi confused. The girl began to carefully examine the guy for the presence of various wounds. And then she exhaled and said that she was very glad that he was alive, immediately asking where he had been. She was mad at him because she was so worried. Lint greeted the girl and apologized. And then, with a smile, he took the bag off his shoulders, opened it, and said that he had found a good place and collected some there. The guy gave Remy a bag of grass. The girl could not believe her eyes, greatly surprised by such a large number of bells. After that, she said that she would conduct an assessment. But before that, her attention was attracted by the mucus that was on the guy's shoulder. She looked at it carefully and asked what kind of slime it was. The guy absently replied that he was now a tamer. The girl smiled brightly and asked again if he was really a tamer. And then she started shouting that Lint had become a tamer. She began to talk about how incredible it was and that he was able to get an unusual skill. The guy asked Remy not to speak too loudly because it's a simple taming. However, the men who had teased him recently heard Remy's words and asked again what had happened to him and if he really was a tamer. Another said it was a great reason to tease him even more. Happy Remy began to ask with a smile if it was possible to touch the animal tamed by Lint and also asked what his name was. The guy agreed and replied that his name was Kirok. The girl began to stroke the slime, which she definitely liked. She talked about how nice, sweet and gentle he was. However, at that moment, someone called out to the guy, calling him Mr. Tamer. Lint twitched at these words. The men walked around the guy from three sides. One of them began to ask if this tamed monster could at least walk on its own. Another said that this is a monster that deserves a guy with mediocre skills. The third one was laughing, standing next to him. One of the men slapped Lint in the face and said that they were waiting for him outside. The guy squeezed his eyes shut from this weak blow. Rimi began to apologize for the fact that she couldn't help but shouted out loud. She also said that she had forgotten that handlers don't like. The guy, holding his face, said that everything was fine and he was sure that it would be so. Rimi took Lint's hand, thereby greatly embarrassing the guy, and said that in any case it was an incredible skill, and now it was clear what he would do. She was genuinely happy for him, and the guy blushed. The girl let go of his hand and with a bright smile asked if this meant that now even the dragons would be under him, and also said that she would make an assessment, so respectfully asked him to wait. Lint was very pleased with the girl's attention, clasping his hands together. The two men behind him looked at the guy darkly and maliciously. One of them couldn't stand it and took the guy by the collar with a very angry face. He called out to Lint, who turned around in fright. The man lifted Lint off the ground by his collar and told him to be careful, because if he even laid a finger on Remy, whom they consider an angel, then he and others would not leave him so easily. At that moment, the girl rang the bell and called the guy by name. 
Lint, and the man holding his collar looked around. She leaned on the counter, continuing to ring the bell, and shouted that she had made an assessment and also congratulated the guy. The girl was incredibly happy and shouted congratulations that he had now been promoted to E rank. Lint jumped up, even the man holding him fell, and joyfully asked if he really had been promoted, not believing it. The guy couldn't believe it, so he ran up to the reception desk and started asking again if he had really risen in rank. He also asked about why this happened, assuming that he had already accumulated points. Remy replied that this was also taken into account, but this is not the main reason. The guild worker explained that what he brought was not included in the route of his assignment. She also said with a smile that he took a risk by entering an area with a lot of monsters. Up to this point, he had only walked in safe zones, and now the fact that he went through the route with a lot of monsters means that the guild recognized his courage. Was the guy really impressed by these words? Lind answered this uncertainly by saying that he did not understand what courage had to do with it because he just decided to change his life a little. Happy for her achievements, Remy said with a smile that the first steps in adventures are the most important especially the first steps for adventurers. The guy accepted the award and joyfully left the guild building, following the path through the village. He turned to his tamed beast Kuruk and said that a lot had happened today, but it was a very good day for him. Slug happily agreed. His partner suddenly became a big shot. Lint also noticed that Remy praises him too much and treats him too kindly. He spoke out loud about his achievements, namely Master Tamer Lint, and noticed that this was a great start, so he raised his hand up and said that he would go forward to his goal. Some time had passed, the heroes were still in their village, which was bustling with life. People walked along the streets between the big houses. Remy touched the Kuruk slug and talked about how cute he was. The same, in turn, was pleased with the girl's attention. Then the girl looked up into the hero's eyes and said that it seemed to her that he was getting more fluffy every time. The guy replied that perhaps this was the case and he no longer believes that Kuruk was originally a slime. Remy wondered if this was possible because of domestication. The guy replied that he didn't know and he didn't think slime usually changed like that. Kuruk took off from the guy's belt, and he confusedly said that he also did not believe that slime could learn to fly. The girl said it was very nice. Then she remembered that she had some good news for the guy. Lint was surprised by this and asked her to tell him. The girl took out her guild worker's bell and started ringing it. The guy was very confused, not believing that this was really happening. The guild worker Remy began to congratulate Lint with a smile on being promoted to D-rank, loudly ringing a bell. The guy and his furry-tamed beast were incredibly happy. The girl handed him the document and said that from now on it was his identification card. The guy was very impressed, looked at her and said that he was very grateful. Remy also added that he has done a good job over the past two years with his pet, the guy hugged him with a smile and said it was all thanks to him. Then the girl handed him an envelope and told him that there was one more thing she needed to do. She handed over the envelope and said it was a letter from the head of their guild. The guy was very surprised and asked again if he had really heard correctly that it was from the head of the guild. He did not believe that the man had written him a letter. The men who were in the guild at the time heard the conversation, especially after Lint's scream, and began to discuss whether the head had actually written it. The guy waited, looking around in confusion, and asked if he could read it. His pet was very happy about these events, and the girl explained to him that of course he could, so he should do it right now. Bylina, to whom the hero told the whole story, was interested in asking him about what was written in this letter. The guy answered her with a smile that there was a congratulation about the promotion, touching the girl. She asked if that was really all that was written there. He replied that of course not, there were a little more surprises. He told his companion that the guild head of their small town was also a tamer, and also that he sent him to the capital. The girl at this moment was very embarrassed by Lint's touches. They were quite close at that moment, so the girl even screamed after which she noticed that this was exactly why he was called to the capital. 
Lint confirmed it. Then Bailina turned to him and asked about what happened after. The guy replied that he had found a cave and lived there. The girl took a deep breath and said that maybe they would need to return to the guy's homeland. She wiped her forehead wearily and the guy asked why they should come back. Lint reminded her that it was a terrible place, and the girl assured him that it was not so terrible. And Bailina also said that in any case, at the moment he is already a dragon tamer with an S-rank satellite. Then she hugged the guy around the neck and said that they would go to the capital first, asking if he had any objections. The guy replied in confusion that he agreed. After that, Bailina told him that she really wanted even more of his attention. Lint confusedly told her that he would give it to her, but not on the flight. She told him that there are no places where you can't become close at this moment. The guy asked her to stop, and she replied that she wanted it right here and now, after some time near the capital. People were furiously ringing the bell, announcing the impending danger. A warrior with a sword shouted at the top of his voice that a dragon had been spotted and that everyone was ready for the attack of the dragons. Another man also ordered the preparation of crossbows. The warriors used bows and crossbows, getting into their positions and getting ready. They were given the order to get ready, and when the big crossbow was also drawn, they waited for the moment when they could fire. Lint was shouting for Bailina to hear him. He was telling the girl that they couldn't just fly in on a dragon. The dragon seen in the sky was precisely the hero's tamed beast. Lint and Bailina had already reached the capital, which was surrounded by large walls, and the houses were much more luxurious and taller. Bailina looked at Lint with a smile and asked if this was his debut as a dragon tamer. And besides, there is at least someone in the guild who does not know the S-rank adventurer like Bailina. Lint replied that she was right, but noticed that it looked like the warriors from below were preparing to attack. The guy asked her if she was a high-ranking adventurer, and the girl replied that there was nothing terrible about jumping from a dragon. So she said she would go explain everything and come back. Lint was shocked by these words of the girl. However, she did not answer, jumped down from the dragon, just telling him to wait for her. Lint was shocked and excited by his companion's act. He said he understood everything, but still couldn't help but worry. Bailina grabbed the spire of one of the buildings, thereby stopping her flight. Lint said that in any case, they need to fly higher, because at this height, the arrows and bolts of crossbows can reach them. As they took off, he thought about who Bailina wanted him to meet in the capital. The guy was looking down. And after a while, I noticed that it seems that all the problems have already been solved. The dragon also looked in that direction. Bailina stood in front of the soldiers and waved at them. She screamed that the dragon gill could descend. Lint and the dragon landed in front of her, and the hero thanked her for solving the problems quite peacefully, because he expected something else from her. The girl asked with displeasure what it should mean. The soldiers with spears were shocked and couldn't believe their eyes. One of them said that this was a real dragon tamer. Bailina replied with a smile that it was real and that's why she told him so. Lint climbed down from the back of Gil's dragon and noticed Bailina and the soldiers looking away excitedly. They were all surprised and looked at how someone was approaching. Lint walked up to Bailina and also looked in that direction. The one everyone was looking at was a hooded man with a staff. He said he was flattered that Lint had succeeded. The guy was at a loss and asked Bailina about who she wanted to introduce him to. The girl stood relaxed and smiling, then turned to the guy and asked him to show Kajiro. Lint was surprised, asked again, and then agreed. He concentrated and called Kajiro, who answered him. After that, the flames of the beast flared up around the hero, and he asked if everything was okay. The hooded man was shocked and said that it was an obsession with spirits besides, the summoner is a high-ranking fire wolf. Bailina smiled contentedly at this reaction and noticed that Lint was so capable, and then she suggested that they already put away their shells. The hooded man smiled and replied that it was his mistake, and then introduced himself as Violento, the head of the capital guild. Lint looked at the man with a smile, then asked again and was very surprised when he realized. 
The hero asked confusedly if he was really the head, and Violento turned around and laughing replied that further conversation was not for the street, so he offered Lint a walk. After a while, they went inside the building. Lint and Kiruk were looking around, and Violento and Bailina were walking in front and discussing something. Lint then called out to Bailina, who was confused and asked what he wanted. The guy replied that it was not what she thought. And then he started asking why she took him to him, and if it was too much. He was confused. The girl replied that, although Violento is the head of the Capital Guild, he used to be the same adventurer, so he should not be afraid. Lint replied that he did not understand, and therefore asked not to speak so casually. Bailina noticed that both she and the Sacred Maiden are S-rank adventurers. The guy said that was true, but still he was confused. Violento opened the doors and said that the heroes could settle down, and also that if they need something, they can tell them, and they will get it. A joyful Bailina jumped on the sofa and said she would sit down here. Lint also sat down on a chair and said that he did not think that the room he had allocated would be different from the rest of the guild. Violento explained that many different meetings take place in this room, so secrets are kept very well in it. Bailina said that the room is also called Violento, in honor of the head of the Metropolitan Guild. The man called out to the girl and said that he was a loving husband and asked her not to forget about it. The girl, laughing maliciously, asked about the ladies who sometimes come here, and then she immediately clarified to Lint that she had not been here yet. The guy was embarrassed and replied that he wasn't worried about it anymore. Bailina came up to him, hugged his head and pressed him to her curvy forms, asking why he wasn't worried about her. The guy, waving his arms, shouted that he was just joking. Violento attracted the attention of the heroes to himself. Bailina and Lint looked at him, remaining in the same position. And he suggested that they get down to business right away, because they need to discuss further actions. The girl let the guy go and said she wanted to talk about the Holy Lily. Violento was surprised by her words. Bailina stood up in a confident pose and made a statement that she had to save Lily. Lint, trying to come to his senses, asked how she wanted to help and how much Bailina knew the saint. The man took hold of his beard and thought about it. Bailina replied to Lint that she really wanted to help and then turned to the head of the guild and said that her heart was breaking. Lint was surprised and asked what it meant. Bailina and Violento looked at the guy strangely, and he explained that he meant what it means to be torn. He spread his arms out to the sides and asked if the plan wasn't just to invite her to the group. Bailina said that Lily, as she calls it, or Lilia's full name, and herself, both are students of Master Violento. Lint was very surprised and noticed that this meant that his companions studied here, and then he asked her why she was helping him, because saints occupy a fairly high position in the Divine Kingdom. The head of the Violento Guild said that he would explain to him the current state of the Divine Kingdom, because Bailina does not understand it well. They walked over to the table and Violento unfolded the map. He pointed his staff at the center and said it was a map of the kingdom. Lint was surprised to notice that she was small. The man said that this is one of the smallest states besides the northernmost. The head of the guild asked him what he was thinking. Lint replied that it looked like the people around him attacked the country quite often, and guessing he asked that it was all because of divine protection. Bailina calmly asked him about the kingdom of God and replied that it was a land of wizards. Lint screamed that it couldn't be and that it was unbelievable, and the girl spread her hands and said that there were rumors that only wizards could be born there. And then I noticed that it was true, because children who can't use magic are killed. Lint shouted that it was depressing, folding his arms in horror. After that, I realized that for this reason no one was attacking them, because you need to be extremely careful. Violento said that a coup d'etat had recently taken place in this land of the gods. The guy was very surprised by the coup. The head of the guild said that he was wondering if Lint had heard about the despotic rule of Pope Zarathustra. The guy replied that his hometown of Framel is on the border, so he knows a little. He said that they claim that a certain religion prevails in all corners of the country, 
worshiping the Pope, who is considered a representative of God, and people living there cannot freely leave the country. Lint also noticed that he can also rely on God when things are going badly, but it is very difficult to constantly ask him. And he explained that this is the suffocation of the people. The head of the Violento Guild thoughtfully pronounced the word suffocation and said that many people feel the same way. Lint asked about the man planning a coup. Violento agreed, adding that there is a person here who has collected everything necessary. Cardinal Karam. The second man in the Divine Kingdom and the leader of the coalition against the Pope. He is fiercely opposed to the Pope and now that he has dealt with the Pope's vassals, he has bared his fangs. Karim raised his hand in the air and shouted the order that the dirty Pope should be killed because the tyrant must die. He spread his arms and continued to shout that God blesses their lands. People stood in front of him and shouted enthusiastically. Bailina took her hand behind her head and noticed that both were tyrants, but such things are fair if they are put by the audience's favorite. Lint asked her what it meant that there would definitely be a coup. The girl agreed and said that, unfortunately, Karam had made one important mistake. And then she said with a smile that she had lost Lily and Dad, and that meant that the saint was with the folder. She told Lint that she was sure that Lily remained on his side. However, she also added that they should have already entered this kingdom because she received a call for help from Lily. Lint was surprised, got up and asked by Lena that they would also help Dad. The girl replied that he was a saint. After that, she asked to listen and began to explain that Lily wanted to be free and, as she had said before, she was also an adventurer. Then the companion smiled and said that in such a commotion, the status of a saint is absolutely not important. And besides, neither the Pope nor Karam would allow such a thing because the existence of saints is important in the kingdom of God. Violento also sat next to them and listened to their conversation. As they say, the saint is closed from God. Her influence is enough to legitimize them for any party and it's not something that can be carried around like a divine favor. The head of the Violento Guild noted that the situation is becoming an interethnic problem because the Pope intends to use the military power of this country for his return. And he also noticed that if this happens, the soldiers will be on one side and the magicians on the other. Lint tensed a little. Violento raised his hand and said that in order to avoid this, he was going to interfere with all attempts to meet the Pope and the King, but the Guild was out of politics. Lint smiled, realizing what the man was leading to, and said that this meant illegal work. Violento nodded in agreement and said that he bequeathed this secret mission to Lint. The guy shuddered, thinking that he had been entrusted with a secret task from the guild. The head of the capital guild looked at Lint and asked if a hundred gold coins would be enough for him. The guy twisted in shock, thinking about a hundred gold pieces, and then, confused, began to ask to wait, remembering how many silver pieces there were in one gold piece. Then he started counting, shook his head, and said that it was somehow not enough. Bailento added that in addition to the money, this is his personal request, but at the same time, it is possible to increase to be rank. Lint collapsed to his knees and threw his head back, thinking about a hundred gold coins and a promotion. Bailina laughed, noticing that the guy had become very motivated. Lint replied that this was not the case because he did not know how to pull it off. These were incredible numbers for him. His companion pulled his hand and said with a smile that she was motivated, so she suggested that he act and see Lily as soon as possible. Then she turned to the head of the guild and said, addressing him as a master, that she would quickly deal with this together with Lint. Violento replied to his student that this job is not so simple, looking seriously into her eyes. The girl stopped and asked the reason because she would just kill Dad and there would be no problems. Violento held out his finger and said that this puzzle should have already been put together. The girl suddenly realized something and then uttered words about the commander of the Dragon Kingdom, the Baron. Lint looked at the girl strangely, asking her who it was. Bailina replied that it was the Dragon Hunter Baron, the highest obstacle in their adventure. Some time has passed. Night. 
The house is surrounded by tall trees on the branches of which unknown monsters are sitting. Next to this house are the bodies of unconscious soldiers on the ground. Kuruk exclaimed joyfully and Lint put his hand up to him and asked him not to make any sounds. He looked out from behind a bush and explained that they could be heard. According to the information available to him, he needs to stick to the plan further. Bailina told him to wait for him and Kuruk at this place and also that they would soon see the saint. Then a whistle sounded and Lint immediately realized that it was a signal. After that he ran out and ran along the path, after which he met Bailina. She stood panting and was glad to see the hero. The girl said she couldn't wait any longer. Lint hugged the girl and asked about what happened and if she was okay. The girl approached him and hurried the guy. She reminded him with a wide smile that he loved her cat ears, remembering how he touched them with his lips. The guy blushed deeply. Bailina grabbed his hand and began to run, pulling him after her and saying that she couldn't hold herself anymore, so they needed to go to Lily faster. The guy squeezed his eyes shut and asked the girl if she really wanted to do this by breaking into the saint's house. Bailina ran with him up the steps inside the house, telling him that she would not swear, so he should not worry. As they ran, Lint noticed more and more unconscious soldiers lying on the ground, and Bailina just screamed that she wanted to go to bed as soon as possible. At that moment, the girl from the bathhouse heard a noise outside, turned around and wondered what was going on there. She understood that it was late, so she thought that Cardinal Karam had already arrived, so she began to leave. However, Lint and Bailina appeared at the door and broke down the door. The girl addressed her as Lily. Shocked, Lily turned in surprise to the hero's companion by name and could not believe that she was here. The fabric fell down, which made Lily scream, and Bailina smiled to meet her friend. Lint, on the other hand, was greatly embarrassed by the curvaceous forms of his companion's friend when he saw her body. Saint Lily shouted to Bailina that she had come very suddenly. The girl crouched down and picked up her cloth, blushing deeply. After that, she asked about who the guy next to her was. Lint closed his eyes a little and said hello. A joyful Bailina with a smile pointed her hands at Lint and introduced him. Lily politely asked her to stop because she hadn't seen Bailina for so long and she was doing this. Lint still couldn't get over it. Saint Lily was embarrassed, pointed at him with her finger and shouted at him to stop staring, otherwise he would answer for his actions with full severity. The hero turned away and Bailina was laughing. Then Bailina put her finger to her face and said that, as Lint's wife, she could tell that the guy knows how to be responsible. Saint Lily was greatly surprised when she asked what she meant. Lily clarified that these were just words because when she said it, she didn't mean anything like that. Bailina approached the girl and began to whisper in her friend's ear, which was why her face was changing. Then the girl tensed and they looked at the guy strangely, approaching each other. He didn't understand what was going on. Saint Lily thought about it and, although she was very embarrassed, she said that if there was no other choice, then she agreed. After a while, Lily said that she was inexperienced, so she politely asked Lint not to be strict with her. The guy took his hand behind his head, was confused and asked if she was sure for sure, and then looked at the girl. Saint Lily put her hands on her curvy curves and nodded, saying that she wanted to be as strong as Bailina. She looked at the hero with a request. Bailina laughed at this and told her that she had just told her in a whisper that she was tamed by Lint, so she couldn't resist. Bailina put her hand on Lint's shoulder and asked him that he didn't want to miss such a chance. The guy still hesitantly agreed while Lily listened and waited. Then Lint realized that he really might never see such curvy shapes again. Therefore, he stretched out his hand forward, finally realizing that this was a chance for a lifetime. Saint Lily closed her eyes and turned away, starting to make sounds. Lint touched her with his hands very carefully and diligently, becoming more daring by the second. The saint got a lot of pleasure from practicing with Lint, her face was completely covered with blush. Lint squeezed the magnificent forms of the saint, which caused pleasure to the latter. She thought it was incredible. 
Lindt continued to squeeze the magnificent forms of the saint with interest and agility. The saint took incredible pleasure in this. She understood that this was an incredible feeling for her. Lindt continued to touch the saint's body with his hands. Now Lindt's hands were joined by his mouth. He knew he couldn't stop now. The embarrassed girl continued to enjoy Lindt's actions. She wanted him to keep touching her body and pushing her even harder. The saint screamed with pleasure. She realized that she had reached the limit from the guy she was seeing for the first time. Lint continued to study her forms. Eye contact was established between Lint and the saint. They looked into each other's eyes with a blush on their faces. The saint asked the master tamer to tame her. Lint was surprised that she called him a master. Lint asked the saint if she was sure Lint would tame her. She replied positively and added that he would become her master after taming. Lint and the saint began to engage in mutual lip contact. Lint lay down on the saint's body. Their close contact began to flow into a more personal channel. The saint replied that she agreed to the taming and asked Lint to start faster. Their lips touched. Lint activated his taming ability. The saint received an immense amount of pleasure from the actions of the applied Lint ability. The saint fell on her back and threw her head back, she bent her legs with pleasure. Lint continued to persevere with all his might. The girl got an inordinate pleasure from what was happening. The blush did not leave the girl's contented face for a second. With pleasure, she stuck out her tongue and began to call out to Lint, calling him her master. From Lint's actions, the saint began to salivate profusely. Lint completely leaned on the saint. He held her by the back and pressed her against his torso. The lips of the hero and the saint touched again, their bodies were sweating, and their faces were covered with a slight blush. The saint continued to enjoy herself immensely. The languages of Lint and the saint began to connect together. Eye contact was established between them. The hero, addressing her by name, assured the girl that everything was fine. Bailina's hand grabbed Lint's face. The blushing hero was greatly surprised by this turn of events. Lint's head and torso were covered in sweat. Bailina quickly approached Lint's face. They both came in embarrassment and touched lips. Lint was surprised by the adventurer's act. The girl grabbed Lint's head tightly. Their lips were still joined together. Bailina's body was covered with a light sweat and a slight blush was visible on their faces. Bailina grabbed the hero's head with both hands. She enjoyed the contact with Lint's lips immensely. Lint tried to find out from her what caused such a rush on her part. In response, Bailina laughed and said that she was calmly watching only because Lint was busy taming the saint, but he was so rude that she couldn't control herself. Lint and Bailina's tongues touched. Their faces were covered with blush. Lint thought he could satisfy the adventurer's desires. However, the hero was already at the limit of his abilities. Lint pushed Bailina onto her back and their lips touched again. Lint asked the girl to slow down the pace of their physical contact. Bailina asked Lint if he was at the limit. Lily was lying under Bailina and she was playfully looking at the pleased girl. Lily has reached the peak of pleasure. Bailina said that this is the last step. Lily screamed with pleasure. Saint Lily's face was covered with blush. Her tongue was outstretched and her face conveyed the highest degree of her pleasure. Lily told the young man that she was ready now. Lint's embarrassed and sweaty face twisted. He trembled and through trembling answered the saint that he was ready too. Lint released everything he had accumulated inside and finished what he had started. The hero held Saint Lily by the waist with both hands, he was at the limit of his abilities. Lily got a gigantic dose of pleasure and screamed loudly. Their bodies were soaked in sweat. Bailina watched the scene with excessive interest. Lily was at the extreme stage of pleasure, her body was sweating, and her face was covered with blush. Lint thought that Lily was very tired, he noticed that it was a good first time. Lint's face looked extremely devastated. Bailina looked at the pleased Lily with a smile and said that she was done with it. She added that now it was her turn to enjoy. Bailina playfully and unexpectedly threw Lint on his back. Lint was in a misunderstanding, he embarrassedly asked her to wait. 
Bailina laughed out loud and replied that Lint was still young and therefore would master classes with her. Lint took hold of Bailina's curvaceous body and knocked her on her side. It was written on Bailina's face that she was experiencing excessive pleasure from Lint's actions. She screamed with pleasure and added that she had been waiting for this moment very much. Lily's curvy curves fell on her back to Lint. Bailina's foot was on Lint's shoulder, and he looked back in disbelief. Lint didn't understand what was going on. Lint called out to Lily in surprise, he was confused. Lily pressed her curvy curves against Lint's back and said resentfully that the master had already forgotten about her, she considered it unfair. There was a slight embarrassment on Lily's face. Lily began to run her nails down Lint's back. The hero was greatly surprised by this act from the saint. Lint felt a strong rush of pleasure from Lily's action. Lint was very embarrassed by this decision from Lily. The saint's fingers provoked a hilarious reaction from the hero. The young man began to laugh hard and droplets of joyful tears appeared in his eyes. Lily stubbornly reached for Lint, their bodies were covered in sweat. With a slight blush on her face, she asked the hero how weak her master was. Lint looked at Lily in great embarrassment. He said she came very unexpectedly. Lint, Bailina and Lily were lying contentedly on the bed. The hero, lying in the middle on both sides, was surrounded by girls. Bailina hugged the young man's hand on the right, and Lily lay quietly on the left. Bailina said she was done. Lint replied that he was very tired. Lily playfully looked at the hero and said that the master was also incomparable. Bailina suddenly cheered up and turned to face Lily. The adventurer cheerfully asked the saint if she liked today. Lily happily replied that she liked everything and she already wants to repeat it. Lint listened to the girls in embarrassment and said that his lower body was still itching. The saint leaned on the hero's shoulder and added that she would wait for Lint to be restored. Satisfied, Lint replied that he fully supported Lily's opinion. Bailina looked coquettishly at Lily and asked her what she thought. The saint did not understand the adventurous question at first, but then replied that she was ready. Lint listened to the words of his companions and did not understand what they were talking about. The saint looked at Lint and Bailina and said with a smile that she needed to show them something. Lint and the adventurer looked at Lily expectantly. Lily was ready to carry out her plan. Lily crossed her arms together and white feathers flew around the room. Beautiful angel feathers began to spread elegantly around the room. Lily's body began to glow. Angelic wings formed on the saint's back, she soared into the air and glanced at the guys. Lily's wings flew open and she froze in the air. Lint looked at the levitating Lily in surprise, he told her that it was incredible and compared her to a goddess who seemed to have descended from heaven. Bailina watched Lily with interest. Bailina leaned on Lint's shoulder and coquettishly said that it was natural, because thanks to Lint, even Kuruk became bigger than ordinary slime. Lint, embarrassed, doubted the adventurer's words. Bailina turned to Lily with a smile and said that she had started doing this even before turning into an angel. Lily proudly pressed the brush to herself and confirmed Bailina's words, saying that she had done this even before the cursed duties of a saint. Lily said that anyone who can do the same as her has a fifth level of magic proficiency. She was going to demonstrate everything in practice and pointed to the side. A butterfly was flying near the light of the lamp. Lily turned to Bailina. The adventurer quickly rushed to the moth and crushed it. Lint was surprised to see what the girls were doing. Bailina opened her hand and a crushed butterfly lay on it. Lint clarified that she could not be resurrected. Bailina stretched out her hand with the moth in Lily's direction, satisfied, Lily looked at the moth. Lint looked at what they were doing in disbelief. He asked Lily what she was going to do. Lily pointed her hand at the dead butterfly and cast a healing spell, the insect lit up. Immediately after Lily's spell, the butterfly soared up rapidly. Lint was greatly surprised by this turn of events. He screamed that the butterfly had come to life. Satisfied, Lily boastfully said that ordinary healing magic was no match for her. She added that this is the level of an angel, which means that she can do the impossible. 
the saint looked coquettishly at Lint and told him that she would be able to resurrect him when he ran unconsciously to certain death. Her words scared the hell out of Lint. Lint was about to say something important with a serious face. He asked in a drawl what they were going to do. He said that he had finally met Lily and noticed that the saint's disappearance would create a big stir. The three of them were lying on the bed. The girls looked at Lint intently. The hero looked carelessly at the ceiling. Lily agreed with Lint's words and added that they needed her and that she came here with Dad. Lint looked at Lily and asked her if he understood correctly that she wanted to stop being a saint. The saint replied that the hero's suspicions were correct and it was all just a decoration. Bailina said that the easiest way would be to just say that the saint had died. Lint noticed that in this case she would lose her high rank. Lily hopelessly said that there was truth in Lint's words. Bailina said that the guild system is very inconvenient and causes only a headache. Lily agreed with her friend and added that after all she would start with the F rank. The adventurer replied that if she had the time, she would be able to rise to S plus rank. Lily noticed that this would be very inconvenient. The girls discussed the guild system with displeasure, Lint watched their conversation in confusion. Lint angrily asked if it was possible to keep this rank. Lint offered with a smile to grab Dad and hand him over to Karim, thereby freeing Lily. Lily was surprised by such a proposal and Bailina listened to the hero's words with boredom. Bailina happily shouted that Lint was a real genius. Lint was surprised by her words. Lily thought about it and said that Karim would not agree to this. She added that of course she wants to kill Dad, but he does not intend to let her go. Bailina was very angry because of so many problems. The adventurer in anger resolutely offered to kill them both. Lint said with annoyance that Bailina's ideas were of course good. Lily angrily interrupted and said that then there would be no one to run the country. Bailina snorted angrily. Lily cunningly suggested that if this headache fell on others, it would be much easier. She added that it was necessary to think about it. Bailina said impatiently that there was nothing to think about because only Lint could handle it. Lily gasped in disbelief and the young man dejectedly asked how he would govern the country. Lily happily supported Bailina's words, saying that it could be a great idea and decided that it would be nice for Lint to run the country. Lint was greatly surprised by the saint's words. Bailina cheerfully stated that she had an idea. Bailina pointed her finger at Lily and said that she was God's messenger. Lily looked at the adventurer in disbelief and asked why it was always so sudden. Bailina happily spread her hands and said that Lily could put him on duty. She asked the guys how they liked her idea. Lint was stunned by Bailina's approach to such a question. Bailina playfully put her hands on Lin's shoulder and said that if they did this, they would have a country under their command beyond the believers and they would be gods to them. Lint, confused, asked Bailina to wait and said that it would not be so easy. Lily thoughtfully said that it might be a good idea. Her words startled Lint. She added that this way she could be both free and holy and they could also catch the coop. Her words drove Lint crazy. The girls joined hands and looked at Lint with admiration. They told the hero to get ready. Lint was greatly perplexed by the words of his subordinates. Lint twisted his hands in confusion and said that he could not believe that he would become the ruler of the country. He added sheepishly that he was an ordinary adventurer. Bailina and Lily looked at the young man joyfully. The adventurer said with a smile that everything was fine and Lily would become a symbol of the nation. Lily cheerfully added that she and Bailina would be his assistants in running the country. Lint was completely confused, he did not understand what was going on. Both girls started talking with a smile. The adventurer and Lily lay down on the bed and at the same time declared that they wanted to be Lint's partners. Lily and Bailina briskly dragged Lint to their place. Lint shyly refused, saying that he wanted to sleep. He offered to continue tomorrow. Both girls provoked the young man to action, adding that he should not worry because they would take care of everything themselves. Some time has passed. Night. A luxurious mansion from which screams and rumbles can be heard. Inside, they are shouting that they need to protect Dad. 
Light by Lena screams and swings her arm, furiously about to strike. She has a very combative attitude. She sweeps through the guards with guns at lightning speed. She only needs one punch to send everyone flying, and she doesn't even need to stop. Bylina spares no one in her path. Hitting the next people with her fist, she swings her leg and hits one guard with iron greaves. Almost all the guards are already lying unconscious on the ground. Lint looks at it from behind a bush and sighs. They are there with Saint Lily. Lint said that he had only blinked and she had already knocked out five people. He even sympathizes with the guards to some extent. Lily sighs angrily and tells Bylina to calm down because she is tired. Lint remembered and immediately asked Lily if the Baron was here. The girl agreed and said that they were not together, continuing to look at Bylina's actions. Then she looked at Lint with a smile and told him that the Baron did not like expensive hotels and also that Dad was wary because of his powers. The guy asked if he really didn't believe in his allies. Lily looked away, thought a little, and said seriously that she assumed that the Baron had surrendered to Dad. Lint was surprised and noticed that in this case. However, Lily interrupted him and said instead that the Baron might be related to the Cardinal. The hero realized, thought about it, and raised his hand to his face, saying that this means that the coup was carried out at the behest of the Baron, and then wondered what it gives him. Lily said it made it clear where he had run off to. At that moment, Bylina knocked out another soldier and was rudely called out from the side, which caused her to turn around. Two huge knights in metal armor stood in front of her. They reproached her for not respecting the people living here, so they, the Dragon Knights, would give her damage. Lint was very surprised, excitedly shouting that they were Dragon Knights when he heard. He was stunned that the Baron had made a fuss. Saint Lily laughed with a reassuring smile and said that they would not defeat their rebel. Immediately after Lily's words, Bylina's fist met the helmet of the Dragon Knight, which bent and the knight himself flew back, crying out in pain. His flight was stopped by another knight who also fell with a loud crash. The third dragon knight raised his weapon in readiness and began to run screaming at Bylina. The girl accelerated and running past him punched another dragon knight who turned around and flew away with a cry of pain. Lint could feel their pain just by watching it, and the screams didn't stop. And Saint Lily said that since the guy has heard about them, he knows that there are only B ranks in their ranks which means that they are bugs for Bylina. Lint sighed and said that in any case, Dad was somehow too tightly sealed, he wondered if the Cardinal had planned this. At that moment, Bylina dealt with all the Dragon Knights who were lying unconscious in the pile. She turned around and said with a smile that she was done. Lint and Saint Lily came out from behind the bush, and the guy praised Bylina, saying that it was a great job, and then he was surprised at how bright it was. Bylina shook off her hands and was glad of the light, saying that more was not needed for such a victory. And then she waved to Lily and said that this was only possible thanks to their healer, so she hoped for the girl to continue. Lily sighed in embarrassment and agreed. The group of heroes ran on. Lint said it was time for them to come in and meet Dad. Bylina asked to provide it to her. Lint suddenly remembered that this was a posh hotel, at least that's what it looked like, Lily agreed and noticed that there are many barriers in such hotels. Then she smiled, looked at Lint, and said she thought she knew where Dad was sitting. Lint, confused, asked her which room he was sitting in. The girl happily replied that of course she was in the best. Belina noticed that he was not the smartest. At that moment, Lint noticed that something flew near his hair and tore down a tree behind him. And after that, a man in a cape appeared with three knives on his belt and one in his hands right next to him and there was a crash. The tamed spirit of Kajero suddenly appeared and stopped the blade with his fangs right in front of Lint's neck. Having repelled the attack, the attacking man jumped back sharply until the spirit of Kajero attacked him. The girls noticed but did not have time to react, so they looked at Lint excitedly. The guy tensed up and shouted about who this man was, not missing the chance to fight. The attacking man landed after bouncing to the ground a few meters from the hero. 
and after that, he immediately took out a spare blade from the scabbard on his belt and stood in a defensive stance. Kajero closely followed the actions, and then everyone realized that this man was the guardian of the Pope. Lily shouted to Lint that she knew him. Lint clarified that she meant the enemy by looking at her. The girl looked at the hero strangely, and nodding, told him that this was Dad's assassin named Sage. Bailina smiled and replied that he was quieter than grass, clenching his fist and not taking his eyes off Sage. Lint wondered if his companions were worried, but was Sage the assassin really that strong? Bailina smiled and told him to tame him. Lint was very confused, turned around, asked again to make sure that he had heard correctly. Saint Lily also happily said she supported the idea because it would be a great practice. Lint couldn't believe they were actually offering him this. The girl was cheering the guy on with smiles. Bailina was rushing him, and Lily wished him luck. Lint said viciously and confusedly that they would then collect his bones themselves. Saint Lily replied with a carefree smile that if it was just a pair of bones, then she would heal them. And Bailina continued to cheer him up, saying that he should believe in himself, and then he would succeed. Lint looked at them treacherously, thinking that these two would send him to the grave, and also wondered what would be abnormal for them. Assassin Sage laughed and asked what kind of trash it was, tossing the knife from one hand to the other. Then he rushed forward as fast as he could and shouted that he was talking to Lint, unhappy that they were having such carefree conversations. Assassin Sage began to attack Lint, not giving him a second to counterattack while Kajero helped fight back. Lint retreated further and further under the pressure of attacks, and Sage very quickly struck new blows. Lint could only defend himself, keeping an eye on the enemy and barely keeping up with him, fighting back with his hands. After a couple of seconds, Sage noticed the moment to attack when Kajero was behind Lint and threw three daggers from his belt directly at the hero. Kajero was quickly able to catch the blades in his teeth and break them into many pieces while Lint was trying to catch his breath a little. After that, he was able to pull away and start maneuvering with the blade in his hands. There was a fire burning around his body due to his fusion with Kajero. Then the hero lunged forward and began to counterattack with a shout, this time striking a frantic number of blows himself. While the assassin sage was fighting back, Kiruk appeared, who rushed at him with a smile and struck him on the head, bouncing behind his back. However, it did not cause any damage to Sage, so he stood in a stance and waited for Lent's action. The guy wiped his face with his hand, resting and not taking his eyes off his opponent. He was thinking that it wasn't so bad. He was grateful to Kiruk, calling him the best defender in the world but he understood that his attacks did not work either. And if he can't cope without help, then he will remain a nobody. Lint gritted his teeth and thought that it shouldn't be like this, because after that they would go after an even more difficult enemy, namely the Baron. Therefore, he must not give up. The guy remembered the faces of Bailina and Lily with happy smiles, who believe in him and support him. Therefore, as their master, he has no right to fall into the dirt on his face. This only worsened the guy's situation, because a burden of responsibility was imposed on him. Sage took a step forward and asked about why they were pursuing his excellency. Lint was surprised by this question and then angrily shouted that he would answer the question with a question. He asked why the assassin was protecting him. Sage was surprised by the question. And then he replied that he did not know, it was because God had ordered it. He was serious. Then he spread his hands and began to explain that he wanted to live for God and die for his glory. This is the task of all mankind. And God came to them in the form of a pope. Then he got back into a fighting position and said that God needed him to protect him, so he had nothing more to say. Lint realized that this was bad because he didn't have time to talk. Kajero was ready to attack. The guy told him that he agreed and added that he no longer attacked as he wanted and from now on they would do everything according to his plan. After that, he gave the order to focus on the attack. Kajero nodded in agreement. The tamed spirit approached the guy's face from behind and they looked at each other. Lint replied that it was alright, Kiruk would be left behind, as would Lily. 
After that, the guy shouted that it was time for them to start. Assassin Sage began to rush from one side to the other, gradually approaching the hero. Lint fended off the assassin's sudden attack with clenched teeth, then squeezed his other hand and began to cast a spell. Assassin Sage was very surprised when he saw the fireball spell. However, unfortunately, he managed to dodge the spell by shifting his body to the side. Lint continued to rush forward and cast the spell with a shout. Sage noticed that the guy had changed his strategy and noticed that it was getting a little hot. After that, he threw his hand back and used a spell. He shouted that this was how magic should be used, calling Lint a baby. A huge fireball appeared behind the assassin Sage, which he sent flying towards Lint a moment later. However, the hero stood motionless in place, not even putting himself in a defensive position. Sage was very surprised why he didn't defend himself, not realizing the utter stupidity. Lint smiled right before the fireball hit, which formed a huge explosion after the collision. Bylina and Lily shuddered, looking excitedly at the explosion, which did not subside. They didn't understand anything either. At that moment, Kiruk took the chance and attacked Assassin Sage in the back, dropping him to the ground. He said that he did not believe that he had turned into that foursome. And a moment before he fell, he managed to put his foot up and land over Lint's burned body lying on the ground. Kiruk looked at him, but the assassin sage bounced off the ground and disappeared in an instant, deciding to leave. Saint Lily and Bailina excitedly called out to their master, starting to run up to him. She lifted the injured Lint and Bailina said that his eyes were leaking out. Lily assured me that everything is fine and she will be able to cure. Until then, she asked the adventurer to cover them up. Bailina replied that she understood and went to the entrance. After some time, Lint woke up with his eyes and mouth slightly open. He was lying on something soft. Saint Lily and Bailina appeared above him. They asked if the guy had woken up and breathed out a sigh of relief, smiling because they were worried. Lint asked them where they were now. The guy was lying on a luxurious bed and the girls were sitting next to him and taking care of him. Bailina replied that they were in the best room of the hotel. The guy jumped up abruptly and asked about what happened to the assassin and where he is now. Lily was smiling and Bailina replied that he shouldn't worry because he ran away. Lint put his hand on his forehead and said in disappointment that he still couldn't win, so it looks like he will have to continue to rely on them. Saint Lily was glad and smiled that, although he believed in himself, he still trusted her healing power. Lint was embarrassed and scratched his head with his hand, nodding in agreement, and said that everything really was like that. And then he asked the saint if all the girls in her state were so amazing. Lily replied that not everyone is so strong, but there is a circle chosen by the Pope. The guy thought that if it was so difficult now, then what would happen next? He decided that there would be many more problems ahead. After that, Lint came to his senses and asked what happened to Dad if he was in his bed right now. Bailina looked at the corner of the room and replied that he was lying there. There was a knotted bag in the corner of the room, which was shaking and making noises, and then a head poked out of it and dad began to cough, clearly being inside with a lack of air. He looked at Saint Lily, Lint and Bailina, and then asked about who they were, starting to threaten that he was the Pope, so they would be punished for their insolence. The heroes looked at him without a single bit of concern. Lint was surprised that the man was swearing and threatening like that, and therefore asked if this man was really a saint. Lily sheepishly confirmed it. The Pope continued to turn his head maliciously, trying to get out of the bag, and continued to shout that he should be released as soon as possible, and then they waited for their punishment. Bailina noticed that he arranged intimacy here with many girls at once at the same time, so little can be expected from him. Lint closed his eyes, grinned and said that he had only a name from the saint after hearing this story. Saint Lily got up from the bed and walked over to him. Dad immediately recognized the girl and started, greatly surprised. After that, he began to laugh awkwardly and tell the girl to stop, calling this situation her joke. He said Lily had had enough. The girl looked down at Dad angrily and said that she was here because of his negligence. 
the Pope began to laugh awkwardly and stupidly, saying that he was just fulfilling his direct duties and the Holy Virgin had gone mad, in his opinion. Immediately after these words, there was a crash and dust rose. After it dissipated, you could see Dad lying on the ground in his bag unconscious for a while. Saint Lily sighed and said that Bailina had overdone it. She replied in her defense that she just slightly covered his mouth. The Pope sat up, glaring at them. And then he started shouting with the results of the blow on his face that she dared to hit him, calling herself a guide of God, so they must kneel. Bailina violently hit him again, shouting at him to put his tongue back in his mouth, from which the man flew off a little. Lint looked at the man in a puzzled way, saying he didn't even realize how hard she had hit him. Bailina, in turn, politely asked Lily to help. Saint Lily sighed, replied that she would have to help, and then closed her eyes and used the holy healing power. The wounds on the Pope's face healed and Bailina shouted at him with a smile to get up. The man was very scared when he saw her nearby with him. Lint then came forward and apologized for everything, and said that he would definitely be alive now. Bailina joyfully took hold of the bag and pulled it out, saying that now she would send it back to his holy kingdom. The man silently trailed after her. Saint Lily stopped her friend, telling her to stop to go to the Baron first. The man started shouting again that he was here, clarifying that he meant the Baron of the Dragon Kingdom, so he offered to go to him so that he would show them. Bailina nodded understandingly to Lily and hit the Pope on the neck so that he would lose consciousness. Lily put her finger to her face, thought about it, and said that in any case they needed to hide it somewhere. After a while, they tied the bag as tightly as possible and laid Gil on the dragon's back. Bailina asked if they were flying to Violento. Having fixed it more securely, she reported that everything was ready. Lint turned to the saint and said with a smile that he would just sit quietly with him. Lily agreed to show the guild her face for the first time in a long time. Lint and Bailina climbed on the dragon and the guy asked Gil to take them to the capital. The dragon shouted, showing its readiness to be dispatched. Saint Lily spread her angelic wings and said with a reassuring smile that she would fly by herself. Some time passed, the heroes were already flying in the sky. Saint Lily was very happy and said that she really wanted to try flying one day. Bailina noticed that she was incredible and looked very much like an angel. They flew over the forest and mountains, heading to the capital to the head of the Violento Guild, continuing their communication. At this time, in the forest, another monster was killed by a man in armor with a huge axe. This man turned around and lifted the visor of his helmet, listening to someone tell him that it would be better if he just ran away. The man in armor addressed him as Sage. It was that assassin who attacked the heroes. He reported that the Pope had been kidnapped and also asked for forgiveness. The assassin was kneeling with his head down. The man in armor thought about the fact that someone was able to defeat the assassin, and then he viciously asked about who that person was. Assassin Sage raised his head, glancing at the man in front of him, saying that this man was with the Sacred Maiden. The man in armor glanced at the assassin and said he understood so Sage could go. The assassin addressed this man as a baron. The past is a certain amount of time, the capital city, a market filled with a huge number of people. Lint asked if it was true that Bailina and Lily were so famous. They were walking down this street. The guy asked about the need for their disguise. The girls used capes on their heads to hide. Bailina replied that it was just in case because she did not want unnecessary problems. Lint noticed that with ears like Bailina's, which peeked out from under her cape and gave her away as a cat, there was not much point in disguise. The girl smiled and asked what he meant, because she really likes the hood and it makes it much easier for her to walk. She asked Lint if it was a bad thing. Bailina also noticed that the guy's new robe fits him well. The guy smiled sheepishly, asking if it was true. The girl confirmed it. Lint looked at his robe and said he didn't expect to be able to get it. The head of the Violento Guild said that just by wearing it, Lint would be able to become stronger. Lily suggested that Violento has a lot of such things, and the guy replied that it was necessary to meet expectations. 
Bailina mentioned Violento. She reminded him that he cried when he saw Lily's face. She thought it was funny. Lint and Lily smiled. Lint thought that Bailino, Lily and Violento were like a family until he appeared, seeing their relationship when they met. The guy said with a smile that he thinks he's worried about them all. Lily laughed and said she would agree with that. Lint in turn remembered that it was funny to see his face when they unexpectedly brought the crying Pope. Lily said it wasn't funny anymore. With a smile, Bailina picked up a bag of gold coins, offering to let go of the memories of Violento and go shopping. She reminded them that they had been given a hundred gold pieces as a reward, and she intended to spend them all. Lint shouted at her not to talk about it for so long, and wasn't she going to spend too much at once? Lily laughed. The characters went to a restaurant together, where there were a lot of guests discussing at their tables and having lunch together. Lint, Bailina, and Lily ordered a lot of food for themselves and started talking about the Baron of the Dragon Kingdom. Lint asked if he was really strong or if she was. He wasn't sure, but he had heard that this person was S rank. The guy thought they needed more information before the battle. Bailina laughed, pleased with the food she ordered because she had already kept the bone without meat and said that the Lint was ready. The guy replied that he was always ready. Saint Lily thought about the Baron, trying to remember something about this man, and said that they would act according to the situation. She began to tell that this man's weapon was a large axe, specifying that it was even gigantic. She also said that from what she had heard, the Baron of the Dragon Kingdom defeated the Royal Dragon with one blow. And Lily clarified that this dragon was the strongest of all. After the victory, the Baron said that he was the commander of the Dragon Knights, so he had to obey his will. The Dragon began to resist, and in his dying state began to use fire breath. The Baron of the Dragon Kingdom swung his axe and began to attack, saying that it was his choice. Fiery breath began to be emitted from each of the Dragon's heads, but the Baron's magical armor was an excellent defense. The dragon with a large number of heads and three brags, although it hit, did not cause damage because of this, despite the huge explosion. Since the magic armor was able to protect even from a dragon attack. The baron continued to move towards the dragon through his breaths. This was one of the special features of the baron of the dragon kingdom. She jumped with her giant axe right at the dragon. A woman in armor strikes directly at the dragon's head. The woman tightens her grip on the axe and swings her weapon again. She's about to deliver another blow to the dragon's head. A woman in armor raises an axe over her head and, turning around, strikes the monster. The dragon's heads rush at great speed towards the armored woman but are overtaken by flames that consume them. A woman in armor covers her hand from dirt and dust that flies from the dragon. She puts the axe aside. When the flames die down, the armored woman puts an axe on her shoulders and says that the dragon can rest in peace. She believes that by defeating the dragon she was able to improve her skills. At this time, Lind looked dumbfounded. He tilted his head and began to stare at one point without moving. The girl who was sitting next to Lind puts her hand on the guy's shoulder and starts shaking him. She notices the guy's strange condition, so she tries to shake him up. She calls his name. Suddenly, the guy leans forward sharply and, shouting, asks if they are really going to fight a very dangerous monster. He points at himself and asks how they can fight something like that. The girl in the hood folds her arms and smiles. She asks the guy not to be pessimistic. The girl looks condescendingly at the guy, and then she turns to Bailina and reminds them that their chance of winning is 70%. She wonders if Bailina agrees with her. Bailina nods her head. Lin gets up from her seat and asks what it all means. He cannot believe that the chance of their victory is so great. He wonders if the girl really believes in herself that much. Bailina folds her arms over her chest and begins to list the names. She was thinking about who could join their squad in order to increase the chance of victory. The girl then shouts out that Lind probably won't be able to survive the battle. The guy is very tense at this moment. Lind hugs Kuruk and complains that they are being forced to risk their lives. 
At this moment, Bailina raises her index finger and says that there is a huge chance that Kiruk will survive. Linda looks at the girl incredulously and asks if she really thinks about it. The girl blushes and joyfully says that after the turn of the Kiruk monster, Kajiro will attack. She also mentions that Gil can fly. That's why she considers him the equal of Kajiro. Bailina turns to Linda and says that's why she thought their chance of winning was 70. She convinces the guy that he will not be able to survive. Lind grabs her head and asks if it's okay to say something like that. Bailina gets up from her seat and says that so that this does not happen, they will train. She convinces Linda that if he gets stronger, he can survive. Lind gets gloomy and says it's a complete nightmare. The girl in the hood says that this is why she took several assignments from Violento. The girl hands over the task sheets and says that they are all B rank, but they may well raise the adventurer to a rank. Lind blushes and ponders her teammates' words about improvement. But first, the squad decides to go to the store. When they go inside, they are immediately greeted by a salesman who greets them loudly. The man immediately recognizes Bailina and the Holy Virgin. Lily takes off her hood. She asks if they are bothering the seller by coming unannounced. The seller smiles and says that there is nothing wrong with that. Then the man turns his gaze behind Bailina and examines Linda. He asks who the guy is. Suddenly, he remembers that he has already seen this guy. He recognizes him and opens his eyes wide in surprise. Lind smiles sheepishly when the salesman asks if he really is a dragon tamer. The guy is trying to remember if they met. The seller folds his hands and apologizes for the rudeness. He introduces himself and says he is a gun store salesman. The man says he desperately wants to see what Lind is capable of. He claims that he is glad to meet him. Lind spreads his arms and says that he needs a new weapon for the task. He needed a weapon especially. The man bends down and says that it is a great honor for him to equip the dragon tamer with weapons. The seller asks if the squad really has no money limit. Then he says that he understands everything and offers to go and look at the weapon. The man turns around and asks if Lind wants to use a light one-handed weapon. He remembered that Lind loved working with him. The guy confirms the man's words. Bailina appears behind Linda and asks the seller to bring the best they have in the store so that they can be proud of the weapon. The seller bends down and smiles. He asks clients to wait for a while, then they will be able to see what they cannot even imagine. He says he will provide an absolutely huge arsenal. The man leaves and the squad has to wait for him for a while. A few minutes later, the seller returns with a gun in his hand and apologizes for keeping his customers waiting. Lin starts examining the weapon. First, he examined the light one-handed sword. Then they brought him a huge heavy sword which the guy could not lift. The seller said that this huge sword belonged to the brave warrior Alexander. He also argued that the sword should be balanced. Then the guy decided to try out the bow. He took it in his hands and pulled the bowstring aiming. At that moment, the seller said that he thought that the bow of three bows would also suit Linda. The next weapon that Lind begins to examine is a dagger for self-defense. Everyone else is admiring the dagger. The guy examines the next weapon, the noble sword of the Asian aristocracy, created in three layers of iron and steel. Bailina points to the weapon and offers to buy it. The guy claims that the weapon is very large, so he won't be able to carry it. Bailina turns around and convinces Linda that they have bags, so they will be able to carry so many large weapons. The guy frowns and says that's not the point at all. Lin turns to the seller and asks how to use all these weapons that they will buy. He claims that he wants to buy all the weapons that are in the store. The man smiles and says he will bring even more weapons. He claims that if the guy doesn't like it, then they can return this weapon. Lind looks at the salesman and asks what it means. He asks if it's bad that he buys everything. The seller smiles and says that on the contrary it will be good if the guy decides to return the weapon. The seller planned to sell the weapon for more, using the fame of Linda. Lind looks gloomy and says that the seller has settled in well. It seems to him that the man looks like an aristocrat. 
the seller raises his hand and laughs. He says that people like him can only live in business. Bailina says that they will be able to bless one weapon in exchange for swords. The seller raises his hands and opens his eyes wide with delight. The man asks if his clients will really do that, he thanks them. The man takes the abacus and starts counting. He says their store will keep track of their guns for another five years after purchase. Bailina agrees and passes the bag of money to the seller. The man takes a bag of coins and says that the squad will still need something, then they can come to him at any time. The guy points to the display case and asks if they can buy another item so they don't have to fish. Lind examines the object that is in the window. The seller turns to the guy and tries to say something, but Lind interrupted him and asked if this item was a weapon. The seller replies that it is indeed a weapon. He asks if the guy wants to take a look at him. The guy agrees and says he's just curious. The man takes the weapon out of the window and tells him that the weapon was created by Alan, the greatest blacksmith. The guy looks at the seller questioningly. The seller says that the weapon is unfinished, so it is difficult to assess its effectiveness. The man comes down and brings the gun to the guy. He claims that it is just hanging for beauty. Their store had no plans to sell these weapons. The guy agrees with the man and says that the weapon looks like a sword hilt. The guy picks up a weapon and examines it. It seems strange to Linda that the weapon fits well in his hand. Bylin walks up to the guy and asks what Lind thinks about guns. Lind replies that she doesn't know. He says that the handle has no weight at all and cannot cause much damage, so it did not look like a weapon. Lily comes over and examines the weapon too. She thinks about it and asks if this item can be a magic weapon. The seller says that this is unlikely since the existence of a magical weapon has not been proven. The man says he analyzed the weapon. During the analysis, he learned that there are many rare materials in it. He argues that if the weapon were finished, it would be fine. The seller is sure that no one will be able to finish the weapon. He believes that Master Allen was very upset about something. Lind intently examines the hilt of the sword while listening to the man. The squad left the store in the late afternoon. Lind was walking through the woods with his companions. In the end, Lind still took the hilt from the sword, which was incomplete. The guy was able to persuade the man to sell him this weapon, although he did not want to. Then the guy looks around and thinks that the most important question is where they are now. The guy gets scared when he notices some huge monster in front of him. Bylan comes closer, examines the monster, and says that it is the giant Hercules. She says that this is a B-rank monster with the size of a dragon, albeit a small one. Lin says the girl is true. He remembers that they are usually caught with traps. Lily comes up to Linda and says that they are training now. She raises her hand, clenches it into a fist, and says it's time for them to fight. Lin tenses up and asks if the girl really wants to fight the monster now. Lily says that the assignment says that the giant should not be severely maimed. She reads on and says that the customers would like to see him alive. The guy starts to worry. He understood that the monster was B-rank, so he had no reason to be afraid. Moreover, winning without much effort will give him an a rank. Lily smiles and says that Violento is a good cook who always makes a delicious dinner. The guy is still doubtful. He reminds her that he has a C rank. Then the guy decides to act anyway. He moves forward and prepares for battle. Lind looked resolutely at the monster and thought that he would be able to inflict some damage on the monster. He also counted on the fact that with Kajero's strength, he would be able to deal more damage. The guy is about to summon Kajero, but Bailina stops him. She approaches the guy and asks him to try to summon Kajero, not as his assistant, but as a free unit. Lin turns around and looks at the girl. He first asks what it means, and then he says he'll try anyway. The guy calls Kajero. A huge wolf appears right in front of him. The wolf immediately approaches his master and fawns. The guy smiles and pats the wolf on the head. He says that everything is fine and that Kajero has a job. Kajero starts howling. The monster immediately turns at the sound of the wolf howling and heads towards its opponents. 
Lin sits on Kajero and gives him the command to move forward. The wolf and the monster collided. Kajero grabbed the monster by the torso and threw it aside. The monster fell to the ground with a crash, landing near Lind. Lind covered his head with his hands and looked dumbfounded at the monster that fell right in front of him. He shouted to Kajero that he was incredible. Lind walks up to the wolf and pats him on the head. It seems to him that his summoned pet is now invincible. He is confident that with Kajero it will be easier for him to achieve their goals. After he started practicing with Kajero, his own strength became much greater. He wondered if this meant that he had been very weak before. Bailina comes up to Linda and asks if the guy noticed. The guy turns and looks at the girl questioningly. Bailina smiles and says that now they can finish training. The guy turns gloomy and asks if the girl is really telling the truth. He asks what will happen to his progress. When Bailin starts teasing Linda again, Lily comes up to them. The guy immediately turns around and looks at her. Bailina winks and reminds me that trust is very important. She argues that there should be as much trust as possible. Lind rubs the back of her head and blushes. He asks if it's true. The guy says he's trying, and then he decides and asks how it can be done. Lily blushes and looks away. She says she's confused about something. She then asks how Lind is feeling after the merger. The guy raises his head and thinks. He responds by saying that he defends himself better with Kajero. He also feels that his physical abilities are growing. Lily closes her eyes and then smiles and says that her master thinks of Kajero as armor. Lin strokes Kajero and says that this is not the case at all. Then Lin turns back to the wolf and repeats again that the girl is wrong. Lind looks intently into Kajero's eyes and claims that although he is a spirit, he is still a friend and a member of the team. Lily smiles and explains that merging can work badly if Lin doesn't fully trust the spirit. Lind hugs Kajero, who stuck out his tongue and wagged his tail happily. The guy agrees with the girl, turns to Kajero and says that he and Kajero should try again. After a while, Lind notices that the monster was moving towards them again, which was already ready to attack them. Lind puts her hand on her chest and calls the spirit. He puts his hand to the side and Kajero begins to materialize behind him. Suddenly Kurup jumps out and flies straight towards the monster. Lind looks at the creature dumbfounded and asks what it is doing. Lin sees that Kuruk is going to attack the monster, so she shouts at him to come back and do nothing. Kuruk does not obey Linda and starts flying around the monster and hitting him. But the monster did not react in any way, as the blows were very weak. Bailina approaches Lind and asks him not to worry. She explains that the monster only reacts to those who are stronger than it. The guy asks what it means. Lin turns to the girl and asks what will happen if the monster does not react to him. Bailina says that the guy has her and Lily for this. She says that he didn't notice them because they were hiding. The girl points her hand at Linda and says that if he tries hard, they will all come for them. Kuruk stopped attacking the monster and frowned. He flew to Lily. Lily caught the creature and Kuruk immediately exhaled in relief. Lily looked at the creature and said it did a great job. She says Kuruk deserves a massage and another workout. Kuruk smiles and makes a joyful sound. Lily pats Kuruk on the head and turns to Lind, telling him that he must trust his spirit. She claims that this is the only way they can become one and not interfere with each other like Cancer and Swan. Lind turns back to Kajero and says they need to try again. The guy starts interacting with the spirit again. At this moment, Lind thinks that he hesitated for a very long time, but at this moment he believed in Kajero. Together with Kajero, they begin to shout and growl loudly. Linda is enveloped in flames. At that moment, he raises his head and shouts for Kajero to start acting. More monsters entered the field and they all started moving towards Kajero and Lind. The monsters were accelerating and were about to strike at Lind, who was standing in the center. Lind screamed and started attacking with Kajero. Lily and Bailina look dumbfounded at their comrades and shout at them, asking what they are doing. 
Bailina shouts to Linda that they should act in a completely different way. Bailina and Lily tried to stop the master, but it was too late, as Lind had already attacked one of the monsters. After the collision of Linda and the huge monster, there was an explosion and a bright flash. After a while, the flames died down. Lind began to open his eyes and mumble. He didn't understand what was going on and why he was lying on the ground. The guy heard Lily's voice asking the guy if he was awake. The guy immediately recognized Lily's voice, but it seemed to him somehow unusual. The girl smiles at this moment and asks how Linda is feeling. All this time the guy was lying on the girl's lap. Lind asks the girl where they are. Lily responds by saying that after the fight they moved and put up a tent in which they decided to take shelter. She tells me that she bought this tent a day ago. At that time, Bailina was approaching the tent. She went inside and asked if any of her partners wanted to eat meat. The guy gets up and immediately recognizes his partner. The girl smiles and hands Linda the meat. She says that the guy must have been very hungry all this time. Lin takes a bite of the meat. He admires the taste of meat and compares it to a delicacy. He asks where the girl found such delicious meat. Bailina laughs and says that Lind found this meat himself yesterday. The guy spits out a piece of meat from his mouth at the same moment. Bailina tells that this monster was defeated by another monster. She claims that the morning was very busy. Bailina chews the meat and looks at Linda. She asks if the guy remembers anything about yesterday. The guy puts his hand to his head and tries to remember something. He blushes and says he remembers teaming up with Kajero. After that, he couldn't control it anymore. The guy strokes the creatures and laughs. He apologizes for making them worry about him. Lily looks at the guy with a smile and says that this is also a kind of advancement in training. The guy puts his hand to his chin and thinks about it. He still agrees that the girl is right. He believed that this would allow him to become stronger. Bailina laughs again and says that if the guy continues to mope, he will give her his strength faster. Lind is outraged, asking how this is possible. He calms down and asks more seriously if this is true. Bailina smiles and confirms that this is true. The girl mentions that Kuruk also defeated one Hercules. Lind screams again and asks how the spirit was able to defeat Hercules, he just couldn't believe it. Lind looks at the spirit and asks when it managed to become so strong. Kuruk pulls out a sword and begins to swing it. Lind looks at the creature and asks what it means. He wonders where the spirit got the sword from. Lind picks up the spirit and examines it carefully. He turns to Lily and asks if she was talking about these workouts. Lily raises her hand and says it's okay. She claims that Kuruk also helps. Lily also mentions Bailina's horns and her wings. She says that if her master becomes stronger, then they too gain strength and also become more feminine. She claims that this is evolution. Lind looks at Kuruk in confusion and then picks him up and asks if he really can do anything. Kuruk makes a sound. Lind grunts questioningly and asks what the creature is trying to say. Lind asks if Kuruk wants to train. The creature raises its arms and screams joyfully. The adventurer squad was still in the forest. The sounds that Kuruk was making could be heard. Bailina was sitting with her hands on her knees and her head in her hands. She was humming a tune. Lily approaches the girl with cups of tea and asks how their partners are doing. Lily notices that the girl is drawing something on the ground with a stick. Bailina replies that the fight is pretty good. Bailina continues and says that Linda has 87 wins and Kuruk has 98 points. Lily hands a cup of tea to Bailina and says that their master has come a long way. She asks if the girl agrees with her. Bailina smiles and agrees with Lily. She tells me that she lost 16 times in a fight. Bailina turns her gaze to Kuruk and Linda fighting. She said they've been fighting for a very long time. But she had no doubt that Kuruk was starting to get stronger. Lin swung his sword and moved towards Kuruk. He struck at the spirit, but Kuruk blocked it, and then decided to fly away. Lind caught up with him again and swung his sword in order to attack. Lind does not have time, and he has to move away. 
Then he screamed and moved towards Kyuruk again. Kyuruk managed to climb up and then began to spin and descend at great speed, pointing the sword towards Lind. Lind managed to block the blow. But he did not have enough strength, and as a result he fell to the ground. Kyuruk didn't stop and started attacking again. Lind manages to dodge. Kyuruk plunges his sword into the ground. Lind manages to grab the sword that was stuck in the ground. The guy pulls out various weapons from time to time and tries to attack Kyuruk. There is a ringing of steel and screams. It's getting lighter in the forest. Lind is lying on the ground and breathing heavily. He was trying to recover from the battle with Kyuruk. Lily approaches her companions and says that they did a good job. She asked them not to move because she wanted to heal them. Lind gets up and thanks the girl. Kyuruk is sitting on the ground and making strange noises. Lily finishes with the treatment and raises her palms up. She reports that everything is ready. Kajero stuck out his tongue, Lind blushed and smiled, saying that he felt much better now. Kyuruk also smiled. Lily says again that the fight was great. Lind gets up and, blushing, says that Kyuruk was just giving in to him. Bailina swings the sword and asks what Lind thinks of the sword. She wonders if he has found anything useful. Lind picks up the sword and looks at him. He says he's been using it for a long time. The guy noticed its balance and power. The guy swings the weapon and says it was easy to use. It seemed to him that he could move even faster. Bailina looks admiringly at the weapon and says that it is not just called a scimitar. Lind puts the weapon on the ground and is glad that he is big and looks like he can handle anyone in one swing. True, it was difficult for Lind, but the guy thought that he could cope with it with the help of Kajero. Lily suggests that this is a good choice. She says that the Baroness is well armed, so she suggested choosing the appropriate equipment. Lin tries to hold on to the heavy sword, and at that moment asks if one sword is enough for them to resist the axe. Bailina is smiling. She is confident that everything will be fine. The girl laughs. Lily says that if their masters accidentally cut in half along with the sword, then it can be put together. She has to clarify that this will only work if the cut is clean. Lin says that everything is very easy for his partners. The guy thinks again and turns his gaze to the sword. Bailina walks up to Lind and stands behind him. Lind takes out the hilt of the sword and asks if it looks like a magic sword. He says he still hasn't figured out how to use it. Lind holds out his hand and says he can release the Kajero flame through it, but it was still unstable. Bailina looks in amazement at the flame that bursts out of the handle. Then Lind continues and says that if you focus on him, he becomes noticeable and vulnerable. Lily picks up the hilt and looks at it. She says they need to know more about it. Suddenly, flowers appear from the handle. Lind opens her mouth in surprise and looks dumbfounded at the hilt. Lily laughs and says it's a healing sword that can be used to restore life. The guy notices behind his back the flowers that have grown on the tree. He is amazed and confirms this because flowers have grown on the dead tree. The guy turns back and says it's amazing. Bailina walks up to the guy and smiles. She is glad that the guy will still be able to use this sword. Lind was fighting monsters again. He was shouting at Kajero that they needed to try and give their best. The guy was standing right in front of the monster that was about to attack him. Lind expected the monsters to attack them again if he and Kajero started interacting. Lind resolutely looks at the monster and says that he alone was worth all his training. The guy raises his sword and points it at the monster. He shouts to Kajero that they need to move to attack. Kajero growls. The monster roars and rushes forward, opening its mouth wider. Lind swung his sword and took off. They rushed forward with Kajero and shouted. The guy stabbed the monster. Lind smiles and rejoices that he was able to intercept the power of Hercules. The guy gives the command to Kajero, and the wolf begins to act, strengthening his master's body. Lind punches the monster with all his might, which makes rumbling sounds. Then Lind swings, shouting a battle cry, and lands a powerful blow right on the belly of the monster. The monster makes its last sounds and falls to the ground, kicking up dust. 
Lind picks up his sword and exhales in relief. He is glad that he and Kajero have coped. Bailina raises her hands and is happy that the guy managed to defeat the monster. Lily is also happy about the master's victory and says it was amazing. Next to them is Kyuruk who makes joyful sounds. Bailina runs up to the guy and hugs him. She congratulates the guy and says that he was able to reach the rank. Lind is confused and asks if this is true. Lind and his companions look at the defeated monster. He says he was finally able to defeat an rank monster. He assumes that one wound on his stomach will be enough to defeat his enemy. Lily recalls that many people say that the giant Hercules is a pass to the world of an rank traveler. Lind is surprised by what has been said. Lily becomes more serious and talks about how the giant Hercules has thick armor and powerful strength, and above all, the fear he inspires in his opponent. The girl claims that only a person with a rank will be able to resist him. Lin says that now he understands why he is going through this quest. Lily says the guy did a good job. Bailina raises her fist up and screams with joy. She suggests finishing the quests and moving up to S rank. Lind laughs anxiously and says that the S rank is too much. The guy puts his hand on the bag that was hanging from his belt and says that he is still surprised that the giant fit into it. He notices that the magic bags are wonderful. Lind points her hand forward and suggests that everyone else call Gil to move on to the next quest. He says they don't have much time left before the fight with the Baroness. Eilina raises her hand and mentions that she has already shared the news with Lily. Lily smiles and asks why they shouldn't go to Frammel. Lind asks why they have to go to Frammel, to his hometown. The guy suddenly remembers about the Book of Stars and asks if the girl wants to go to Frammel because of it. Bailina says that this is one of the reasons, but that's not all. Lily puts her hand to her face and says that in the future, Linda should have her own operating base in order to rest. The girls approach the guy and snuggle up to him. Lind blushes when Lily says they're going to share a bath, and Bailina says that they will need a large bed for two people. Lily smiles and looks slyly at the guy. Bailina blushes and runs her tongue over the guy's face. Lind blushes and smiles. He says he really needs an operating base. The little lizard-like monsters heard some strange sound and immediately raised their heads up. They saw something terrible so they ran to hide in a hollow tree. At that moment, a huge dragon flew over the trees. The whole squad was heading to Frammel. Bailina says she is looking forward to seeing Linda's home. Lin turns around and blushing says that there is nothing to expect there since his house is just ruins. Lily says that they are interested since this is still the house where their master spent his youth. The whole squad approaches the destroyed house. The girls stop and open their eyes wide in surprise. Bailina asks if this is really their master's house. Lily laughs and says that Linda had a stormy life. Lind blushes and says that's why he didn't want to take them to his house. Moreover, he had already told them about it. Lind folds her arms over her chest and looks away. He says that this house was enough for him to survive the rains, he said that he did not live in the best conditions, considering that he was a tamer. Bailina notices that the house is located far from populated areas, she asks if it was convenient for him to live in this place. Lind holds out his hand and says that this is additional security from the pursuit of other adventurers. Lily comes closer to the house and asks if the guy has any memories of his family. Lind waves his hand and says that he has been pretending to be an adventurer for as long as he can remember. Kiruk makes a loud sound. Lind approaches the spirit and grunts questioningly and then smiles and says that the spirit is right. The guy confirms that the spirit is his family. He justifies this by saying that they lived together for a long time, protecting each other. The guy remembers how they survived both rainy and snowy days. And they also shared the meat that they bought with the little money they earned. On cold nights, the guy relied on Kiruk's fluffiness. Lind claims that even so, this house was the only place where his heart could rest. Bailina looks at the guy with pity and says that it must have been hard for them to survive in such conditions all this time. 
Linda waves her hands, smiling and says that everything is fine. He claims that you don't have to worry about him. Bylina walks up to the guy and starts whispering in his ear. She says she can make some exceptions at night. Lind blushes and opens her eyes wide. And then he blushes harder and opens his mouth in shock. Lily looks slyly at Linda and says that since this is the case, they need to clean up the house together. The girl began to roll up the sleeves of her sweater. Lind asks what it means. He did not understand the girl, so he tried to stop her, arguing that it was not appropriate for the Holy Virgin to do something like that. He says they can't do something like that in this place. Therefore, he offers to rent a hotel room later. The girl stood up and began to conjure. At some point, the ground began to shake around her. Individual pieces of earth began to rise up. Lind covered himself with his hand and asked what was going on. He looked back in fright and saw that the ground was moving away from under his feet. Kuruk flew up. The guy ran forward and asked what it all meant. Huge stalks burst out of the ground, which began to lift the stone slabs on which Lind and Bailina were located. The huge stems began to transform. As a result, they formed huge spikes and covered the entire squad. The stems begin to collapse and crumble. A castle appears on the site of a ruined house. Lind looks at the castle in amazement. He asks how this is possible. Bailina looks up and sees the huge towers of the castle. Lind looks around and says it's just unbelievable. He asks if it's really a castle. Bailina puts her hands behind her head and laughs. She says that since the guy is a tamer, he should live in a mansion. Lily turns to the guy and says she used her recovery magic. She hopes that the guy will like it. Lily laughs and says that Bailina is right, the master will go down in history. The guy asks if he can do it. Lily blushes and says that in the future they will have a huge number of group members, so they need a spacious and large headquarters. Mylna blushes and hopes that other girls will join their squad. Linda laughs sheepishly and asks what the girl means by that. Bailina noticed that Gil was flying up to them. She says he was probably sleeping in the woods nearby. It seems to Lily that Gil noticed the house appeared. Bailina waves to Gil. The dragon notices the squad and flies up to him. Gil lands near the castle and rumbles happily. The whole squad is approaching Gil. Lily says she made a bed for Gil. Linda looks at the dragon dumbfounded and says that Lily really gave it her all. Bailina at this moment offers to look at the house from the inside. The whole squad goes inside the castle. Lind looks around and is amazed at the high ceiling. Bailina was sliding down the banister of the stairs and Lily and Lind were walking up the steps. Lind continues to look around and says it's hard for him to see everything when the castle is so big. Lily smiles and says that there are all the rooms they need. The girl also says that the furniture will be a little later since this is just the beginning. Bailina offers to look into the bedroom. The whole squad goes into the bedroom. Lind notices that the bedroom is huge. He claims that cleaning will take a long time. Bailina jumps on the bed and says that with such a spacious place he can do whatever he wants. Bailina stops and says she'll figure something out with the housekeeper. She says they'll be content with that for now. Then Lind notices another room. He asks what is in it. The girls say it's a bathroom. Bailina says that the bathroom is made of glass, so you can see everything. It was dawn in the castle. Bailina cut an omelette with a knife and threw it into her mouth. The girl tells Lily, who was sitting opposite her, that she found an egg in the forest in the morning. She claims that they need to eat well. Lind comes into the dining room with a saucer and a jug in her hands. He smiles and says that there was nothing but eggs, Hercules meat and wild grass, so he couldn't cook something gorgeous. Lily abruptly rises from her chair and asks the guy to leave the cooking and serving to her. Lind claims that everything is fine. He says he likes to cook. Lin turns his head to the side and thinks that his partners don't know how to cook at all. Bailina looks at the guy with a menacing smile and asks what he said. Lily stands next to her and asks her master not to compare her with Bailina. 
Lily sits down at the table again, wipes her mouth with a napkin and, closing her eyes, confirms that they still need help. She says they need cooks and butlers as they now live in a huge mansion. Bylina folds her hands behind her head, smiles and says that without servants, their castle will not function as a base. Bylina gets up and holds out her hand, saying that they will rarely appear in the castle, so someone will have to stay in it and keep order. Lind agrees with the girl. Lily folds her arms and, closing her eyes, with a smile on her face, says that they should build a garden suitable for Linda. She wanted to plant a lot of flowers. Lind blushes and puts her head on her hand. He says that in that case they will hire a gardener. He asks if the girl is trying to put pressure on pity in this way. Bylina looks slyly at Linda and holds up her index finger. She says that if a guy needs a landlord, then she can help with the search. Lind is surprised and then asks what kind of strange person would come to such a remote place. Bylina smiles and says that everything depends on the payment. Bylina jumps on a chair and says that it is very interesting to talk about such things. Lind smiles and says that as soon as the Baron's case is resolved, they will move on. The next day, the whole squad made their way through the thickets of the forest. Lind pushed aside the branches that climbed into his face. Lind asks if the girls are okay. Bylina says she's fine. Then she asks how the girl is feeling. Lily closes her eyes and reminds that she is an S-rank adventurer. Bylina looks at Lily with a smile and says that she is walking very slowly. Lily starts to get angry. She says she will accelerate when necessary. Linda turns around again and, addressing the girls, says that it will be easier for them to walk soon, so they could not worry. Bylina removes a tree branch from her face and asks why they should go out of their way and go around on the other side. Lynn says they don't have any attractive loot, nor will they meet other adventurers. He mentions that there were inexpensive medicinal herbs in that place. Bylina smiles and says she understands everything. She claims that they are following Linda's safe plan. It seems to her that this is a special survival technique. Lind closes her eyes and thanks the girl for the investigation. Bylina looks around and says she still can't see anything. Lily asks what the girl expected. Bylina starts waving her fists and says that she wanted to get into a fight with someone to vent all her emotions. Lily says that no monster will show up in front of such a dangerous person as her. Suddenly Bylina notices something in the bushes. She gets wary and looks better. Lily walks up to the girl and notices something too. Bylina asks what Lily sees in the bushes. Lily still doubts the correctness of her assumption, so she hesitates. Linda looks at the girls and doesn't understand why they react so strangely. The guy points towards the bushes and says that there is a cave there. He asks if the girls really can't see the cave. Lin starts turning his head from side to side and says he doesn't understand why he's the only one who sees the cave. Lily thinks about it and says that, most likely, this is the magic of disguise, which was activated with the help of the Book of Stars or artificial technology. Linda asks why, in that case, he is the only one who can see her. Lily suggests that this is because of the resonance. Lind asks what resonance is. Lily replies that it's a matter of compatibility with the Book of Stars. She talks about how the Book of Stars chooses a person who can read it. The guy asks again what the Book of Stars is. Lily explains that it is also called the Book of God or the Legacy of the Sage. Bylina says they've come so far that they now know where the entrance is. At this point, Lily suggests they move on. She says she'll turn on the light. Lind first wants to ask about the light but then remembers about the torch. The girl really turns on the light with the help of magic. Lind is amazed at the girl's abilities. He opens his eyes and mouth wide, saying that the room has become very bright. Bylina sniffs the air. It seems to her that it looks like a place for gathering animals. Lily approaches the girl and tells her that she doesn't always sniff in public, and then he laughs. Bylina blushes. The girl opens her eyes wide and says that Lily is right. She thinks she did something like that without really thinking about it. Lily asks if the girl really only behaves like that with people she trusts. 
Bailina puts her hand over her mouth and says she's being stupid. Lily notices that Bailina has such a pleasant side. She asks Linda if it's nice to know about something like this. Bailina quickly steps forward and says she doesn't know what her teammates are talking about. Bailina goes to the wall and begins to examine it. She's surprised. The guy notices the strange reaction of his partner, comes closer to her and asks what she saw. Bailina turns around and says that she noticed some writing on the wall. She thinks it's some kind of ancient inscription. Lind examines the wall and sees ancient writings. He says he didn't notice them last time, most likely because there wasn't good lighting. Lin turns to Lily and asks if she can read them. The guy wanted to know what was written on the wall. Lily replies that she can read them, but she notices that something dark is stuck to the wall. The girl holds out her hand and realizes that it is blood. Stunned, Lind asks where the blood could have come from in this place. He exclaims, asking what is going on. Lily reads and says that it is written on the wall about the number of books about the stars and their goals per person. Lynn screams and says that this is amazing information. Bailina is also happy. She raises her hands, clenches them into fists and starts asking questions. Lily covers her eyes and then says that the most important part is hidden by blood. She gets more serious and says she doesn't know. The girl offers to continue their journey. The squad is moving on. Lynn says they came to that very room. The guy looks around and says that it wasn't so bright in this room last time. He couldn't see everything then. Lynn didn't know there were so many sheets of paper in this room. The guy goes down and says that in any case, they better pick up and collect everything. He begins to collect the sheets. Then the guy offers to collect and analyze everything later. Bailina picks up one of the sheets and says that there are a lot of them. Lily, blushing, offers to take as many sheets as they can. Lind abruptly turns to the girls and says that she doesn't know for sure, but they may find sheets with strange things, so she warns them and asks them to be careful. Bailina and Lily look at the guy uncomprehendingly. In the late afternoon, the squad returns to the castle. The squad spread out all the sheets on the table and began to analyze them. Lily says there are a lot of sheets. She assumes that these are all pages of the Book of the Stars. She asks what the girls think. Lind examines the sheets and says that he needs to read everything first. Lily says that in that case she will go and make tea. Bailina quickly runs up to Linda and shows her cooking companion. She was holding an exploding fruit in her hands. Lind picks up one of the chairs and covers herself with it. Bailina laughs and says that the guy doesn't have to worry. She claims that the fruit is deactivated. Bailina winks and says that the guy is right that these are just bad memories. She says that Lin doubts her culinary skills. Then Bailina throws up an exploding fruit and begins to carve it with her own hands. The pieces of fruit fell directly onto the plate in front of Lind. Lind looks at the slices dumbfounded and says it's incredible. He claims that the cut and thickness are perfect. Lily comes with tea and says that Bailina is very good at cutting. Bailina laughs. Then Lily adds that it wasn't a compliment. Lin tastes a slice of fruit. Lily and Bailina look at the guy with smiles on their faces, and Lind continues to eat the slice and read what is written on the pages. Bailina approaches the guy and asks how his work is going. She wonders how much the guy was able to read. Lind is embarrassed and says that there is a lot of information written on the pages that he already knows. He adds that the pages contain information about new ways to train. Lind thinks that information on the topic of self-knowledge is just about human limitations. He asks if this is the case. He also says that the pages say that it is necessary to try to take and tame various opponents. Lin turns to Bailina and asks if she and Lily would like to read about it too. Bailina says that she and Lily can't read them. Lind asks why. He mentions that both girls should have a book about the stars. Lily smiles and says that Lind is right. Then she says that Bailina really has the book of the first fighter, and she has the book of Hiller herself but they can't read each other's books. Bailina suggests checking it out. 
She takes out her book of the first fighter and hands it to the guy. Lin tries to read the book but can't make out the words. He is amazed, and then he says that he is not able to understand what is written in the book. Lily holds up her finger and suggests that only suitable candidates selected by a certain book can read it. The girl understands that this is a strange story, but she believes that there is a truth that goes beyond common sense. Lily says that the entrance of the master into this cave is a fate connected with the Book of Stars. Lind thinks about the words about fate. The sounds of embers in the fireplace are heard. At this point, Lind squeezes the pages tightly with her hands and says that this is not good. Lind stretches and says that more pages have been lost than he thought. Bailina grins and asks if it's true. Lind says that there were signs in the cave that people had stayed there. Bailina abruptly rises from her seat, her eyes wide open. She asks what this means. She claims she didn't notice anything like that. Bailina says that Lind is amazing, and the guy at this moment turns away and smiles. He assumes that such books have simply disappeared. Lily approaches the guy and says he needs to take a break anyway. She suggests that they think about everything during the completion of their quest in a day. At this time, a ship arrived in the royal capital. The man entered the room of the royal capital guild headquarters. He announced that the investigation had been completed. Bailinto, who was the master of the guild, turned around. He picked up the report and began to read. Violento read that the chances of monsters appearing near the triangle to the west of the eastern forest are much lower. The man realized that there was a powerful caster there. Violento was thinking about the commander of the Dragon Knights. The man decided to warn Lily about where she was. The man believes that they will be able to figure it out on their own. The man realizes that everything indicates that Lind has become stronger. He can't believe that the girls have influenced him so much. Violento wanted Lin to come back stronger. He believed that the guy could become a tamer who would no longer fit into the S rank category. Lily suggested finding out what they would need to do in the process of completing the next quest. Lily read in the note that the delivery of the jewels was delayed by the Queen Ant. The girl turns to Linda and says that his taming will be tested in this place. Lind asks if it's too much. Lily claims that ants alone are no higher than C-rank monsters, but in a group they are already a rank. The guy looks anxiously at the ants that surround them and asks if the girls really want the guy to tame all the monsters at once. Lily says that if Linda doesn't succeed, they will be eaten by ants in the worst case. Lin says that all this is happening only because Bailina destroyed the nest. Bailina laughs and apologizes for not being able to hold back. Lind holds out her hand and says she'll try to figure it out after all. He doesn't know how to do it, but he gathers up the courage and comes closer to the ant. The guy just stretches his arm forward, putting it right in front of the ants and asks him to tame it. The ant hit Linda on the head. Lin squeezed his eyes shut at that moment and then opened his eyes wide and realized one very important thing. He found it difficult to tame an ant because ants in principle do not act alone since they have a collective consciousness. The guy heard the ant's request to ensure the safety of the group not to touch the queen. Lind thought Bailina's punch had worked. The guy noticed that the hostility of the ants was disappearing. Bailina grunts questioningly and can't believe it. She asks how this is possible. Lind understood that ants are for group consciousness rather than individual consciousness. That's why he decided to take advantage of it. The guy explained to the ants what he and the squad were trying to achieve. He told the ant that he wanted them to meet their queen and take the red ball from her. Later, an incredibly huge ant queen appeared right in front of the squad. The queen brought a red ball and handed it to Linda. Lin took the red ball and thanked the queen with a smile. The queen tilted her head to the side. That's how Lind was able to succeed in taming for the first time. After that Lind examined the red ball that the queen had brought him. Lily also examined the red ball and said that it was actually a rainbow jewel. She said that this jewel is worth much more than the red one. Bailina asked if the guy thought this material was legendary. Bailina says it was very hot in the desert with the flame ants. She was sweating all over. 
Bailina then tells that there was an oasis nearby that saved her. She was able to take a good dip in the cold water in the spring. After a while, strong gusts of wind blow towards Linda. The guy is trying to resist the wind and go forward. He is amazed by the strength and speed of the wind. He covers himself with his hand and does not understand why there was such a sudden change of scenery. Lily suggests looking at their quest note. She says their request is to deliver a stuffed ice wolf. The girl is smiling. The guy examines the girls and screams with indignation because the girls were dressed very warmly and comfortably. Bailina says they dressed warmly because they are bystanders. She says they are very cold when they are not doing anything. Lily agrees with the girl and says that the cold is not for women. Bailina raises her hand up and says that if the guy moves a little, he will be able to keep warm. Lind laughs uneasily. Lind pulls off her raincoat and becomes more serious. He understands that this quest is a battle in special conditions. The guy was thinking about Gil, the dragon with the attribute of fire. He thinks that he cannot put up with such a force in cold weather. Then the guy turned his gaze to Kiruk and noticed that he was all frozen. The guy pronounces the name of the spirit and calls it. A strong energy envelops his body and Kajero appears behind his back. Lind adjusts his bracers and thinks that in this situation, it is impossible to tame creatures as happened with a group of ants because you can only get a scarecrow by killing. Lind turns to Kajero and calls out to him. The wolf is growling. Lind understands that the spirit is also very cold. Bailina says that the ice wolves are approaching them. A huge pack of wolves was advancing on the squad. The wolves growled and grinned. They sped up when they saw a squad of adventurers. Lind wondered what would happen when his familiar weakened. He was wondering how well he would do fighting with just two hands. The guy tried to believe in his own strength and the strength of the familiar. The guy rushed forward and pulled out his sword. The wolves began to jump on Linda, opening their mouths wide. Lind struck monsters very quickly and accurately. But Lind missed one wolf and did not manage to block the blow. At this moment, Bailina shouts to Linda that if he cuts his enemies too randomly, they will not be able to make a scarecrow. He makes a dash forward and continues to attack the wolves. The wolves do not have time to dodge, so they take all the blows. Bailina laughs and says it sounds pretty hard. She doesn't think Lind is using enough power. Lily smiles and says that everything is fine. Lily points to their master and asks Bailina to look at him and his work. She says their master is perfect. Lily says that Lin's strength had weakened due to the cold, but his fire wolf emperor strength was still huge. The girl notices that at the moment, it is an unacceptable luxury to fully use the power of the fiery wolf emperor. Lily continues and says that this is exactly what their master is doing. She claims that he could have let it get out of control by using too much force. Lily smiles and says that if a person understands how to use power, then a person can put more power into spiritual positions. The wolf's body falls right in front of Lind. The guy looks at the wolf and curses because he couldn't keep his head intact. He sets himself up for battle and throws out two of his swords. Bailina looks at the guy in amazement and shouts that he threw away two of his swords. At that moment, one of the wolves rushed forward to attack Lind. Lind screams that he's just started. The guy swung his arm and struck directly at the wolf's head. The wolf did not dodge and flew back. The monster was defeated. Lind walked over to the wolf and picked up his body. Bailina ran forward and started screaming with joy. She screamed that the guy was able to defeat the wolf without causing serious damage. She was congratulating the guy on his victory. Bailina runs up to the guy and says that he fought amazing. She claimed that he was very good at controlling Kajero's power. Lind rubs the back of her head and chuckles. He hoped that this was indeed the case. Lily agrees with Bailina. The girl turns around and notices that more monsters are running towards them. Lily says that now Linda has the strength and weapons to fight the giant Hercules. The guy also had a large number of taming cards for the flame ants. The girl also mentioned Kajero's control and power. 
Lily smiles and says admiringly that the master has become much stronger. She tries to support the guy and says that he will succeed. She thought it was enough to fight the Baron. Lind adjusts his cape and says that he is on the same level as the commander of the dragon troops. When Lind puts on the hood, Bailina says that he has no problem fighting at the moment. She claims that their next goal is to fight the Baron. Suddenly, a strong wind blows, which makes the guy throw his head back. The guy hides himself more strongly with the help of his cape and hood. Lily approaches the guy and smiling says that first the guy should try to warm himself up. Lily blushes and says she can keep the guy warm. Bailina also smiles and says that they can all warm up together. A few hours later, the Baron appeared in the forest. He was thinking about the S-rank traveler with the dragon tamer and the sacred maiden who served the Pope. A man puts a helmet on his head and prepares his weapon. His acolyte says that there was some problem with the Pope, who was taken hostage. The man in armor offers to deal with this problem. He says that the Pope and the Holy Virgin will be good souvenirs. At that time, in another part of the forest, the Pope was upside down on a tree who was tied up and wrapped in a bag. Lin's squad took him hostage and waited for the Baron to appear. This was the battle they had been preparing for all the time. Lin says she doesn't hear any insects or birds. It seemed to him that the whole forest was silent. Bailina says that this kind of thing happens when an S-rank squad gets together. Suddenly, the girl begins to feel something and says that they are in the right place at the right time. Bailina shouts that the enemy is coming straight to them. She claims that the enemy is very fast. Lily asks if the girl really noticed it too. Bailina chuckles thoughtfully and then says that she chose an open place to make it easier to fight. She assumes that it's a little tight. Lin turns to Gil and asks him to step away from him for a few seconds. He says they are fighting against a famous dragon slayer. He says it's not good for him. Gil makes a small sound. Lin smiles and gives a thumbs up. He says that everything is fine. He claims that he may be mistreated, so he offered to go home. Bailina points her hand forward and says that their opponent is already very close. The guy looks ahead and notices a bright flash. Lind opens his eyes wide as he realizes that a shockwave is being used against him. Lin turns to Kajero and shouts a command at him. A shield appears right in front of the guy, which protects him and the entire squad from attack. After the attack ends, Lin swears and asks what just happened. He says they were attacked suddenly and without proper greeting. Lily approaches the master and says that the Baron is not the nicest person. She says that he often uses unexpected blows and witchcraft poisons to win. Lily also says that the Baron is not afraid to use dark magic. She was very serious about it. Lin smiles and says that the battle will be harder than he thought. Bailina points to the Pope and says that he is completely burned. And Lily says she forgot about him, so she'll have to heal him. Lin turns to the side and notices a huge powerful figure. The figure asks if he was really summoned by the adventurers. The Baron steps forward and stands right in front of Lind with an axe in his hands. He says he just cleared the forest so that all S-rank people can hear it. Lind looks dumbfounded at the Baron who has appeared. He's trying to figure out what kind of fighting spirit is coming from his black armor. He had a dark aura and incredible potential. The guy also noticed an axe, which he had heard about very often. He didn't know if he could handle such an opponent. Lind now understood the difference between rumors and a real meeting. But the guy was determined. He understood that he had to fight and win. His servant appears near the Baron. Lind notices this and thinks that the Baron has set up a siege. The Baron says that the servant will have to help him. Lily stands next to Lind and greets the Baron. She says she hasn't seen him for a long time. The Baron immediately recognizes the Holy Virgin. He falls silent for a while. Then he puts down his axe and takes off his helmet. The Baron apologizes for his behavior and welcomes her. Lind looks at the Baron in shock and sees that a girl's face was hidden under the helmet. He blushed and grunted questioningly. The girl looked at Linda, which shocked him even more. The guy notices her long ears. 
Bailina approaches Linda and asks if the guy likes such things. Linda turns to the girl and speaks negatively about her, asking what she is talking about. He thinks it's stupid. The Baron raises his axe and shouts that Lind underestimates her because she is a girl. She couldn't believe it was true. There are loud explosions in the forest. The Dragon Slayer was fighting the Dragon Tamer. The Baron was breathing heavily. She swung the axe and was about to stab Linda. Lind also swung his sword and shouted along with Kajero. Lind's sword struck directly against the Baron's axe. Bailina and Lily tried to take shelter from the wind and dust that had risen due to the battle between Linda and the Baron. Bailina excitedly shouts that Lind has very cleverly caught the Baron's huge axe. Lily folds her hands and says that the results of training with Kuruk are noticeable. The Baron sighs and says that it seems to her that the guy is able to fight with her on an equal footing. Then she beats off the guy's sword and says that he still needs to learn a lot to reach her level. Lind falls backwards and his sword breaks. He understands that his business is bad and now he can lose. The Baron swings his axe and screams that this is the end for the guy. At this moment, Lind calls for Kajero's help. The Baron strikes but does not hit the guy as he jumps up. The guy lands behind the Baron. Bailina smiles and says that Lind was able to fully tame Kajero's power. The Baron turned around and looked at Bailina with displeasure. Bailina says that the Baron doesn't have to worry about them. Lily says their master will be more than enough to deal with her. The Baron chuckles and then asks if the girls really look down on everything. She compares them to thieves. Bailina frowns and asks if Lily heard what the Baron said. She repeats what the Baron called them thieves. Lily confirms her words and says that the Baron will need to be punished later. Lind pulls out a huge sword and shouts that he will not lose. He's getting ready to attack again. The Baron swings his axe and asks what is the point of changing his weapon. She punches the guy and tells him to know his place. Lind blocks the shot. But the Baron hits hard again and the guy finds it hard to hold back the blow. The Baron swings and laughs. She asks what happened. She thinks the guy can't do anything. The Baron strikes. Lind has been holding him back for a while. But then the girl pushes the guy away, which causes him to fly off and fall on his back. The guy gets up and sighs heavily. He looks at his sword and realizes that its blade has broken. A piece of his sword falls right in front of the guy. Lind falls back on her back. The Baron approaches Linda and asks if he really thought he could stop her axe with his weapon. The Baron swings an axe and says that the guy is actually an inexperienced fool. She says she will deal with him, leaving absolutely nothing of him. The Baron uses his magical powers. Lind understands that this will be the end of him if he does not take any action. The Baron strikes and screams at Linda that he will go to heaven. There is a bright flash. Bailina and Lily shout, calling out to their master. For a while they see nothing but dust and fog. When the fog passes, the Baron looks at Lind with a smile on his face, thinking that he is defeated. After a few seconds, the joy on the girl's face was replaced by surprise. She saw Linda safe and sound. Kuruk was hovering right in front of him with a sword. The Baron swears at the familiar. She swings her axe and shoots lightning balls at the spirit. She demands that the spirit disappear. Kuruk dodges all the lightning balls by beating them off with his sword. The Baron cannot believe that the spirit has played a trick on her. She dodges her own lightning balls. The girl is trying to recover from the attack. She is straining and cannot believe that the little spirit has so much power. Lind appears and apologizes. He says he used the tamer fighting style. The guy smiles contentedly and says that his familiars are quite strong. The Baron sighs and asks if Lind really calls himself a dragon tamer. She asks if the guy knows that she is called a dragon slayer. Lind wonders if it's just a name. The Baron smiles and says that's not all. She says she is a pretty strong opponent. The girl begins to be enveloped in flames. She smiles and says she will show her strength. The girl raises her axe and shouts that she will show the true strength of the Baron. The earth rises around her. 
The guy looks at the wave of attacks that is moving in his direction. He feels that a kind of cold is passing through his whole body. Lind finally understands what kind of dark magic Lily was talking about. Right in front of the guy, a huge monster can be seen out of the smoke several times, which stretches its paws and mouth towards him to attack. 